We're gonna do the damn thing. <laughs> I think everybody should surround themselves with badass women. It makes life so much more awesome. Stabbing people in the fucking face. Oh Bible stories. A lot of motherfucking fuck faces coming out of my mouth, so. I also have Chardonnay in the fridge. Journey, if you will. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Fuck, I can't do it. Hi, welcome to High Tea and Strumpets. Hello. It's Bethany and... Meredith. And we have a guest with us today, and we are so excited. We've been raving and wanting to do this podcast so bad because we are talking about a very special lady. But today we have with us is Valerie, who also worked at the farm. <laughs> hey, you can't nod, you have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Who are we talking about today, Valerie? We're talking about Marilyn Monroe. Near and dear to my heart. <laughs> my friend Marilyn. <laughs> You're <Beautiful. bestie. laughs> We wanted to open with a quote from her, and Valerie has hand-chosen a special quote. This was picked from the depths of my Marilyn Monroe soul. <laughs> um... <laughs> So this is this is um, one of her like iconic quotes that I feel like um, is very true for like her life and um, just who she was. Hollywood is a place where they'll pay you a thousand dollars for a kiss and fifty cents for your soul. There's another part of the quote that goes into like I like held out many times for the thousand dollars and like basically mm -hmm. like she like says that she gave her soul away over and over to hold out for the kiss. But that's not the part of the quote that I gave you. <laughs> Who was the kiss, though? Do we know? Was it Joe DiMaggio or was it somebody else? There was a lot of kisses that she gave. I mean, she gave a lot of herself to many people. She did. Come yeah. On. So why? We also have another guest star. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry that we didn't introduce her. Beautiful Tel Tilda. Come here, Tilda. Oh, and did my Edie. Crumpling <laughs> around. <laughs> so why? So what has drawn you to Marilyn Monroe? When did your love story begin? So um, I've been a really big fan of Marilyn since I was probably eleven or twelve. Um, I don't really remember how it started, but my mom always um, made us watch a lot of, like, excuse me, older movies. Um, I uh, I feel like I like got a movie from the library or something um I was like always a really big fan of like Alfred Hitchcock and stuff um and I I'm trying to think of what <laughs> thirsty I mean Why we all are we drink <laughs> while we do this podcast by the way what are we drinking today? oh yeah just FYI I'm drinking my own bottle of rosé called Josh it's a very brownie name I know I like the bottle <laughs> But you guys are drinking some. We're fun drinking stuff. Ho like homemade gin and seltzer water cocktails. Little They're pink. Cocktails. Everything is pink. Yeah, we're, we're very pink today. Is it true? Because you're the Maryland expert, that her gravestone is now pink from all of the women that have kissed it with red lipstick. Oh, um, so she's like her gravestone is like. Um, I believe that it's, like, one of those that's, like, on a wall with yeah. other gravestones at the Hollywood Cemetery. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I've never visited it. Um, it's I've been to L.A. many times, but it just, like, never worked out for me to go to the Hollywood Cemetery. But I will someday and just, like, pay my respects so fucking hard. <laughs> um, but she, uh, I don't know. I know that Joe um, DiMaggio paid to have flowers delivered to her gravesite every week until he died. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I know that there are a lot of kisses on her gravestone. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I've read that it's pink, so I, I don't know. I, We're all I would believe pink it. Drinks. <laughs> I mean, covered with kisses. She would love it. She, she would. All right. We'll continue being your Oh yeah. Love so, story. um, I don't know what movie I saw first or what happened, but, um, it eventually, um, I developed, like, a huge fascination with her because I 
um, watched a couple of her movies and just thought she was so funny and interesting. And um, anyone that's seen her movies um, will agree that she's just, like, fascinating to watch on screen. There's just something about her where, like, she just seems like a little champagne bubble that just, like, won't pop, you know? Like, she's just for sure so, like, lovely and, like, full of joy. And, like, there's just something about her that just makes you want more, which is why she did so well in film and... Um, when people would take pictures of her, there was, like, this effervescent quality to her skin, and she really worked really hard to, like, cultivate that, too, yeah. and with mm-hmm. her pers- persona as well. Um, and so I've seen most of her films. I haven't seen the films that where she has, like, a very small part. Like, I, I mean, I've seen, like, All About Eve and, like, um, Asphalt Jungle, where she has, like, small parts and, like... Um, but there's a lot of movies of hers now... Um, that she had really small parts in, but, like, when you go to, like, rent those movies or something, it has, like, a huge picture of her on it, and she's only <laughs> in it for, like, 30 seconds. Oh, my gosh. Um, but I've seen a lot of her films, and I have favorites for sure, um, but it's really interesting to, like, watch her, the way that she acts in all of them, like, before she went to the actor's studio and, like, after, and then where she was in her life, and to see that and, like, her interaction with her co-stars, knowing what I know about her, and, like... Um, her costumes and her makeup and, like, all that stuff is just, like, super fascinating. And I've always been really um, interested in makeup, which maybe that was why I got into her. I can't quite remember. But I also started reading a ton of biographies about her. And she has, like, a published um, diary as well, which is super fascinating because it has, like... Oh, she does? mm -hmm. It's, like, a diary and, like, a half-finished autobiography with, like, poems and sketches and stuff. Super cool. Um, And so, like, that, like, for me, as, like, a girl in the Midwest who was just, like, obsessed with makeup and, like, fashion and old movies, and I didn't really have anybody to talk to about it besides my mom, um, (laughs) Marilyn was, like, a really great, like, source for me to just, like, really delve into because... I, f- I, like, truly felt when I was, like, really, really into... I mean, I'm still into her, but, like, when I was super into her, I, like, really felt that we would have been best friends, which is, like, so crazy because, like, <laughs> me and Gemini women are just, like, so... Like, we just, like, really connect really well, and, like, mm-hmm. I, I just, like, always felt like I would have had a connection with Marilyn if I had known her when she was alive, and I would have, like, dreams of, like rescuing her or, like, saving her from, like, yeah. her life, which a lot of women had after she died because, yeah. like, they felt bad for her. Oh, wow. But um, she, uh, what else? Sorry. Can I say, no, it's fine. can I mention Music also eating. that um, Mar- Marilyn is a Gemini, and there is at least some Leo in this room. So we have... There's three. I mean, like, I'm you saying, guys are I'm all saying we all Leo got a little rising. bit of Leo. Yeah. Valerie and I are Leo Risings. Mm-hmm. Meredith is I'm a Leo a herself. <laughs> but Marilyn was also a Leo Rising. Marilyn was so also a Leo Rising. I feel like when you were talking about her, like, um, people seeing her and wanting more, like, mm-hmm. that's what I thought of. Was, like, that Leo Rising. Yeah, and then she And also, Geminis can also be very, like, magnetic. Definitely. And then also she had an Aquarius moon, which meant that she was, like, super aloof. And in terms of her, like, close personal relationships, really aloof and, like, really in her head. And so, like, a lot of her relationships had, like, I feel like they didn't always work out because of, like, a lot of issues that she had um, dealing with them, like, on, like, a, a, not, like, mental level, but, like, um, a psychological or, like, intelligence level. And um, I feel like she was incredibly intelligent and... Um, I feel like even more today, like people are realizing that she was incredibly intelligent and talented Mm -hmm. that they didn't realize at that time. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like at the time too, people were just seeing, oh, like she's just a pretty face. So like exactly, that's usually the attitude with women. Yeah, like blonde. Oh, she's blonde, and yeah. Oh, and I feel like that kind of still ran into like definitely like my understanding. Of what yeah. people thought of her. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. there's so many misconceptions yeah. about her. And, like, I mean, she's not here anymore to defend herself or to talk about herself. And, like, all we really know is, like, her story and, like, some of the people that were close to her. But, 
there's like certain people that were close to her that I trust their story and certain people that were close to her that I don't trust their story. Oh. Um, and we'll get into that, we right? Will, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I'm a huge fan. I've read a lot of books about her. And what's really cool about Marilyn is that it, we were talking about this earlier, is that it seems like every generation has a resurgence of Marilyn. Yeah. So like, you know, there was um, some... I'm sure there was Marilyn happening in the 70s, but like in the 80s, there was Madonna was re re Mm -hmm. doing Marilyn. We had like, who was it in the 90s that was redoing Marilyn? Everyone. Everyone. Um, Was it um, Christine? No, not Christine. Oh, I mean, like Britney Spears Spears. definitely pulled a lot from Marilyn, and also like Christina would also do that. And then in the 2000s, Lady Gaga, Mm -hmm. oh fucking course, and like, like Marilyn has always. I mean, Anna Nicole Smith, like Mm -hmm. Marilyn has. She was the 90s. Like (laughs) (laughs) going backwards. I mean, like Marilyn is just like timeless. She thought she was Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, far from it, but. I mean, maybe. No. I feel like there's some present days, too, that I just can't think of at the moment. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, she's just, like, this person that, like, she's, like, the epitome of, like, sexuality in a woman. Like, she was, yeah. like, one of the first people to, like, really, um, which is, it's it's uh, frustrating to, like, think about sexuality at the time, like, in, like, the 40s and 50s mm. and 60s when she was, like, doing her thing, especially in the 50s because... Um, it, it was so um, restrained and so like yeah. when she would you know like and it wear was a tight skirt and walk away from the camera people were just like oh my god what the fuck <laughs> like <laughs> Not that language, but like people were freaking out, you know, like they like the ways that they described her were like so strange. Like they were just like, oh, she's got a horizontal walk, and they're just like, what, what does that this? mean? Everybody has a horizontal walk. We all walk up and yeah. down. Oh, that's vertical. Yeah, no. they mean <laughs> like her walk, <laughs> they like her like butt her. moves oh. like in a certain way. And well, there's that mean. iconic image of her. Keeping mm-hmm. her skirt down while she's over like a... I remember, okay, <laughs> being <laughs> in my childhood church, and um, there were these vents that would <laughs> pull up heat. <laughs> I remember as, like, a little girl going and being like, Ooh! Like, me and my <laughs> would be, like, Marilyn <laughs> next to the pews, like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean... And what's crazy is that, like, even you and your church, and like the <laughs> like how when, yeah. however, like and whatever without even was, knowing where you knew, you just mm-hmm. knew she it was loved. Maryland. Yeah, mm-hmm. like that. Um, it's incredible that like her reach is still so far. Yeah, and I feel like, I mean, I feel like IKEA sells a lot of you know wall art that's Maryland. So every basic bitch has. A Marilyn Monroe obsession. Oh, yeah. It, but I it mean, spans over... Yeah. I mean, and I'm a self-proclaimed basic bitch, so I'm not making fun of Well, her bitches. image was just actually... Um, the people that are in control of her estate, the Strasburgs, uh, passed away, I want to say, in, like, the mid-'80s, late-'80s. And their stepdaughter was then in control of Marilyn Monroe's estate, and she just, like, sold it to a company that managed her, like, licensing. And so then that was when you saw, like, Marilyn Monroe in, like, bags and blankets and shirts. Everywhere. Everywhere. And it's all, um, I think some of the money is going to a charity for kids that have been abused and I don't know where the rest of the money is going. That's but she crazy. makes so much money still. Mm-hmm. Much, 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 much more than she made when she was alive. She made, like, nothing when she was alive. Yeah. She was very, like, didn't make, like, anything. Who are the, the Strasburgs? Is that who? Well, we can get into that. Oh, right. shit. Let's go. Yeah. So <laughs> let's um, start from the beginning. So uh, Meryl Monroe was born um, Norma Jean Baker. Um, so she never knew who her dad was. Um, she always imagined that it was Clark Gable because her mom worked as a um, film cutter in Hollywood. Um, so she was born in Los Angeles. And her mom uh, suffered from um, schizophrenia 
And so Marilyn, um, for much of her childhood, was um, in and out of living with her mom, which was, like, super joyful times because her mom would be, like, really crazy and, like, frantic and just, mm-hmm. like, I love you so much. But then her mom would, like, have to be a and, that. Yeah, and then... <laughs> So her mom eventually got committed again to a home, and she lived with her mom's friends. Um, Their names are escaping me right now, but... um, So she lived with them, and then she also lived with another set of friends. So she didn't have, like, any extended family. I don't remember where her mom was from. I read it at some point, but it didn't even matter because she didn't really have any family that, like brought her in or anything um so her mom's uh friends and then friends of friends would like care for her so the first home she was in and she also went to orphanages a couple times oh wow and so um in one of the orphanages um supposedly other people that had been in the orphanage said that it was like fine it was like totally great like they fed them they were clean it was like a normal place not like a creepy house um but for Marilyn it was devastating because she had this like life with her mom even though her mom was sick she was quite young she was like six or something and she was just like no one wants me I'm like in this orphanage and my mom I can't be with my mom and she's my whole world and so she's like in this orphanage so and she's devastating feeling unwanted. yeah like she had a, she had her mom yeah and her mom had to be committed um multiple times in her childhood because her mom, like, couldn't cope by herself. And so then Marilyn's mom took her out again uh, out of the orphanage and put her in the care of one of her friends who was an older woman. So her and her husband took in Marilyn, and they would have in, like, um... (laughs) This is Tilda! Hi. Oh, um, hello, hello. Sorry, I hope she doesn't scratch you. It's okay. Remember um, the time she climbed up my back? Yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was so a fun sorry. day. <laughs> um, so they would take in, like, borders and stuff. And this was when Marilyn was about, like, eight or so. One of the boarders um, actually <laughs> ended up, like, sexually abusing Marilyn. Mm, Jesus. Um, something, of course, that she carried with her her whole life. At eight? At eight. And what really sucks is that if you look on Marilyn Monroe's Wikipedia page Mm -hmm. Uh and you read about how she had been physically abused when she, or like sexually abused when she was a child, there is like a little footnote at the bottom that says like, this is just what Marilyn said. Like, (gasps) I'm paraphrasing. What? And it's like, it's like, this is what Marilyn said happened. And then they quote, like, three men, and they say, these three historians don't believe it happened because it's all based on what Marilyn said. Because they're fucking men? Like, that's... Because she was eight years old, and it was, like, the fucking, like, Why would an eight-year-old lie about that? Exactly. Ugh. It was so crazy. So, like, that happened with, like, a border in the house that she lived in. But with the so media, you can edit it, so yeah. why don't you edit it and delete right. that shit? <laughs> that's what I would do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go in there, you know yes. um, we, we have a female historian in here, and she knows. Hi, exactly. Marilyn Monroe, eight years old. Yes, it happened. Not to, like, divert from the seriousness of the story, no, but do please. you ever feel like Tilda, your cat, is Marilyn Monroe reincarnated? <gasps> <laughs> because I mean, she just jumped up on my lap while we were talking about her and, like, licked the water conversation off my glass and <laughs> had to be part of the she story. She is very needy. <laughs> she is very I don't know. My pets are definitely familiars of some kind. Yeah, for sure. Um, like more so than like anything I could have ever imagined. And well, and Edie's name is perfect. I know. Oh, did I tell you I fin- finally watched Grey Gardens? Oh my god! I know. I love it. And so then you much. saw, and you were just like Edie is. I was like the Edie. Edie. <laughs> She's mother and daughter. Edie. She would not say that. She <laughs> Yeah. She just wants to eat corn in the bed. <laughs> she knows her name. Well, Edie, you um, I saw the musical on Broadway, and there was a song about the corn on the bed, and I died. Wait, nobody in the one theater did you was finally laughing. Watch? Did you watch the one with Drew Barrymore? Did you watch the original Grey Gardens? No, the original. Oh yeah, the one. Okay, amazing. 
The one with Drew Barrymore, also amazing. Okay, they're okay. both really good. That's, is that just came out, right? No. Um, I don't know, like, maybe... Because I love Drew. Like, she's she's Pisces, years ago. Yeah, she studied the accent for, like, two fucking years. Oh, that's a Girl special accent. Good. It's yeah. Jessica Lange, too. Oh, I love oh, yeah. Jessica. It's so no, good. It is fucking incredible. Yeah. I need to watch that. So, so good. It's so good. Because I am, like, a diehard fan. I fucking named my dog Edie. Like, a <laughs> huge fan. And I, like, put off watching it, and then I find I didn't know. I was just like, oh my god! And I like cried and like, it was amazing. But the musical is also incredible. I took my sister to see it in Seattle. Fucking amazing. I had no idea what it was until a little over a year ago when I broke free of my horrible abusive relationship, mm. and I was staying with my best friend Megan. The one that's Poppy Lance a lot on Broadway in Tacoma. Um, I'm just going to give her a <laughs> shout out. <laughs> anyway, I was staying with her and I texted her one day and I was like, what are you doing? And she was laying in our friend James's bed with him drinking blue champagne watching Grey Gardens. And I was like, blue what champagne? Excuse me? <laughs> I need to know what this means. And so I watched Grey, I watched both of the Grey Gardens. I watched the, the actual oh, yeah. Grey Gardens, and then I watched the one with Drew Barrymore and Jessica Lange back-to-back and laid in, well, Megan's bed, which was, I was sharing with her in a one-bedroom apartment at the time, by myself, drinking rosé, and it was pretty much So good. Yeah. I had a friend in college. My life has never been the same since. I mean, I had a friend in college that kept saying, like, you should watch Great Gardens. You should watch Great... And I was just like, stop telling me to watch this weird garden movie. Like, <laughs> stop it. And it wasn't until, like, years later that I, like, finally watched it. Sadly, I was eating while I watched it, and I shouldn't have been, because I can't handle mm-hmm. them eating that corn around all that cat hair. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. <laughs> I know. It is really hard to watch, and it's... Um, Milo and I watched it together. You have it, to watch, before you leave for London, yeah, you have to watch the second one. I, yeah, I want do. to. It, it, we it's watched, like a bookend. We like watch, it gives yeah. you the before, it gives you the after. Really? Yeah. yeah. It tells okay. you their story. It's so, okay. and it's so thoughtful, and it's done with so much love, and like, that's good. So much respect. Yeah, it the really is. Would have Not the documentary done. now version. <laughs> oh my god. Did you ever see that? Oh my god, yes. Oh god. It's, it's so, so good. good. Yeah, that was. So I felt like with like the um, black dance. Yes. Oh, he does so good. This is the outfit for today. <laughs> oh god, I love it. So and good. um, what's the Bill Bill here? Oh, so good. Anyway, Grant Gardner will watch. Oh yeah, back to Maryland. Maryland. Uh, she didn't know them, uh, as far as I know. Okay, so Marilyn, mm-hmm. eight years old. Totally abused by her border in the house where she was living. Um, what's really interesting about Marilyn, during the time when she was famous, in the 50s and early 60s, mm-hmm. she talked about her abuse. She talked Ooh. about being abused as a child and being sexually abused as a child, oh, no. which was total taboo. No one talked about that. It was totally a faux pas. Everybody, like totally like ganged up on her and they were just like oh you don't know what you're talking about blah 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 she's crazy oh. which like at the, can you think of any so society gaslighted artist her about it during that t- yeah any artist during that time that talked about being abused as a child no no never no no because and we've talked about this on our actual on our first episode of the podcast where we were talking about which had stemmed from a conversation with Sue actually um, how that generation of people was so mm-hmm. strange because they were trying to break away from what their parents were, so they yeah. were like rigid and weird, and now we're still trying to break away from that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's just so strange to me when I think of, too, when I think of people like Marilyn Monroe and how like sexually free she seemed she to be, like, and she was, and she just talked yeah. about it, and how weird that was. She was free was. in like a lot of ways. Yeah, too. and how before and after that it doesn't mm-hmm. seem as weird, but during that time it was like... <gasps> oh my yeah. scandalous and it was yeah. crazy and it's really sad because um, she would talk about it in like on the record interviews mm. and just be like yeah. people would be like oh what's your background she would be like well I lived in a boarding house and like I lived in orphanages and I was sexually abused as a child and like 
people, and then of course, like male historians would just be like, Rot-no. "I doubt that happened because all I know is what she said. That's the only evidence." And it's just like, "Yeah, fucking course. She was eight years old. Yeah, like nobody's gonna come forward and say that they fucking raped Marilyn Monroe. Like that's crazy. No, because they would be they would be ruined yeah. forever, and they have no care that she might have been ruined. Exactly for that. So when she was um, coming into puberty, um, Marilyn Monroe was a natural brunette. Um, with blue eyes. Um, I don't know what her, like, genealogy is, but, um, she, that would be really interesting to know. That would be amazing to know. Yeah, I'm I'm sure that people have, like, hairs of hers. But, um, so she had, uh, like, chestnut brown hair that was, like, wavy, but it's hard to tell because people always curled their hair at that time Mm -hmm. in the 40s. And she had blue eyes. And, um... She was, like, very, very shy, probably because she was sexually abused. And so, like, well, you know, only during... the person she trusted and loved was ripped away from her exactly. a lot. And um, she didn't really have a good support system. So she was um, no longer living in the boarding house uh, situation with the one friend of her mom's. And she went into this other situation with another mom's friend. And um, as she came to puberty, she started to notice that she was, like, growing breasts and, like, getting hips and, like, people were starting to respond to it in a way that nobody had ever responded to her or given her attention before. Mm -hmm. And so she was, like, getting really interested in that because no one ever paid her attention and everybody just wanted her to, like, be quiet and behave. Um, She didn't have a mom or a dad. And she was just, like, living in these situations where nobody really fucking cared what she did. And so the fact that people were starting, men especially, were starting to pay attention to her um, made her, like, sit up and take notice and be like, what can I do to get more attention? Mm -hmm. So she was living with her mom's friend and her husband. Um, They were older. And as she was, like, you know, 14, 15... Um, she was in high school and one interesting thing is that she had a stammer, which she had most of her life. Um, and the kids in the school used to call her the M girl or the M girl. I can't tell because I've never heard her talk about it. Like in an interview, I've just read seen about it read. Um, but it was because she would be like, mm, my, 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 my name is mm-hmm. Norma Jean. Baker, And so, like, they would call her the M girl or the M girl. And um, that was, like, really frustrating to her. So then she would start to wear, like, tighter sweaters so that, like, they wouldn't focus so much Mm -hmm. on her being the M girl or whatever. Oh. And so, turns out she's about 16. Mm -hmm. And her um, foster mom uh, starts to notice that her husband is looking at Marilyn in this way. That she doesn't like. So she Mm. knows that there's a man next door named Joe Doherty, who's very sweet. He's 18. And she decides that she's going to do a love match for Marilyn because she wants Marilyn to get married and get away from her husband because she wants to stop this before anything happens. Wait, Joe Doherty like Shannon Doherty? Like 90210? Yeah, but not related. Oh, man. So <laughs> I was hoping for a I know, too, and I love that. I know. <laughs> so Marilyn, when she's 16, marries Joe Doherty. Oh, wow. And what's really crazy is, like, my mom told me when I was younger that Marilyn would make dinner for her husband, and she would make, like, a plate of, like, peas and carrots and be like, look at the colors, aren't they beautiful? And I was just like... Wow, so <laughs> weird. I don't know why my mom told me that story, but it is not true. I've never seen anything about it. Marilyn, her <laughs> marriage. I don't know where she got that. I don't know. It was weird. Yeah. Um, but it's cool that my mom talked to me about Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. But totally. like, was it maybe it's a, weird a story, story that came about because of the time period that she was famous, where women Probably. were supposed to make dinner mm-hmm. for their husband? So mm-hmm. if Marilyn Monroe was doing, which is it, crazy because Marilyn you loved cooking it. and like. Mm. My mom, like, couched it in this way that, like, Marilyn didn't know how to cook and, like, was just, like, this weird cook and would just, like, make weird colors of because things together. Because she was a dumb, pretty blonde. Yeah, like exactly. everybody thought she was. Yeah, it was really sad. And so I remember hearing that and just being like, oh, it's sad. But so Marilyn's marriage to Joe was, like, 
<laughs> Pretty, like, uneventful. I saw that. I'm pulling crackers out of my... Bra? Cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> um, Whatever. They... Uh, <laughs> He went off to war, and she started working in a factory. Um, she was really lonely and bored most of the time. She's, like, 16 years old. And a photographer showed up at the factory and started taking pictures of the women for this, like, look magazine or something what like that. What kind of factory was she working in? Um, she was working in, like, a war-based factory. <laughs> um, I don't remember what she was making, because I, I feel like she worked in more than one factory. But I don't... I don't remember what she was making. Hmm. Interesting. I don't think people really knew what they were making sometimes. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Or should know. Could know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Would know. Um, that, yeah, would know. The photo you're talking about, I always see this because I follow some, like, weird vintage Facebook page of, mm-hmm. like, photos and stuff, mm-hmm. and there she comes up a bit, and there's this photo of her with dark hair, curly mm-hmm. hair, and it's, like, done in the 40s style. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it's that photo. Be like yeah, the there was a bunch of them. She, um, they photographed her a lot because mm-hmm. they realized that she came across on film really well, and the soldiers really responded to her. So they um, got her information, and then they like did some like shoots of her like on the beach, and they were just like, "Man, you've got like really great like sensibilities about like photography." Which is very true of her. Like, she knew how that camera was going to... Like, she figured it out about how that camera was going to hit her and where she needed to be. I think that's a Gemini thing. It totally is. The Leo Leo comes through. Yeah. I don't know. I'm a Leo, and I can't fucking figure that shit out. But I mean, like... Totally. But Leos will put themselves in that situation, but, like, Geminis know how to work it, I feel Mm -hmm. like. Because I do... I know a few Geminis that love to be, like, watched. Well, yeah. Think about Geminis and that they're... Mercury rules them, and they're the ruler of communication. They're communicating like, through... They yeah, know, like, nice. of course she knows how to communicate yeah. through a camera. Like, so cool. So true. And, like, the Leo drives people to her, and then the Gemini, like, Dazzles. knows how to communicate it, and then the Aquarius just kind of, like, makes her not able to relate to anybody ever. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, I'm sure there's more to it than that. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. But so she, um, so they uh, take pictures of her and um, she's just like, you know what? I kind of want to do film. I want to like check this out. So then she like starts getting into film. She gets a divorce from Joe when he gets back. Um, Cause she's just like, I'm bored and lonely and we're not really compatible. And he's just like, oh, same. Um, <laughs> It was pretty amicable. He was... She always had really nice things to say about him, mm-hmm. which is really nice, because, like, considering how young she was when she married him and how, like, beautiful she was... And how arranged it happened to be. Exactly. Like, he was her neighbor. Mm-hmm. He seemed, like, just, like, a nice, like, normal guy. Um, yeah. So she got... She gets into Hollywood. She, um... Does, like, a bunch of bit parts. She gets, like, a big break in the Marx Brothers movie um, Love Happy, which is, like, a big deal because, like, she gets, like, a scene where she's, like, walking past the camera or something and, like, she gets noticed. And um, this producer called Johnny Hyde um, gets to know her and is, like, really interested in her. And he um, is very old. (laughs) Um, but she loves him and they actually, he's married, but he, she actually has like a sexual relationship with him and he ends up paying for her to get her chin done. So she overhears people saying about her at like a party. Um, oh, you mean the girl with no chin? Oh, the girl that doesn't have a chin. Like people are like making fun of her for not having a chin. And I was just like. Oh my god, LA has always been LA. Like yeah. it's so sad. I know. But even in like the early fifties, like late forties, early fifties. Like no, this was like late forties. Mm. People are just like It's the portal for superficiality people down. bullshit. It's so fucking yeah. crazy. She's at a party and she hears people talking about her fucking chin. Because they couldn't find anything else wrong exactly. with her. Exactly. And so god. she goes to he pays for her to get uh, So it wasn't like a it wasn't like a Oh, like, a bunch of different people have said, you know, you should really 
No, no it's just this conversation people. she heard. Mm-hmm. She overhears and then people was saying, like, "Oh no!" Like she needs to get. It's crazy. So she she decides that she needs to get her chin done. So like. I mean, plastic surgery is in its, like, baby stages. <laughs> and um, there's the jury's still out on to whether they put in, like, a weird, like, calves thing or, like, whether it was a sponge or, like, they don't know what it was, but like they put something. Or something. It might Whoa. have been, like, calf cartilage or a sponge or, like, something weird. It wasn't silicone because they didn't have silicone then. Yeah. Um, but they put in, like, a little chin thing to make her chin stand out a little bit more. And it's actually really hard to tell from photos. And I think mm. it might come across better on film. Mm. But it's so hard to tell because in her earlier films, she's just, like, a mile away. You know, like, you mm. can't really see her facial facial features. And I think mm. it was more people, you know, casting people, seeing her and deciding which is just, like, it's so crazy. That's insane. And then she also got her nose done a little bit. And so during this time also, she was, like, going to some acting classes. And she was also going to some singing classes. And it's when she changed her name to Marilyn Monroe. And so she wanted her name to... Her gra- grandmother's last name was Monroe. So they took that. And she wanted her name to be Jean Monroe because she loved Jean Harlow so much. Oh. She's a huge fan, which is why she dyed her hair. And she yeah. actually used Jean, Harlow, Jean Harlow's hairstylist to dye her hair, like, during a part of her life. Wow. Um, it must have been a lot of maintenance. Yeah. I had blonde sure. hair for a minute. I mm-hmm. couldn't handle it. I'm yeah, no, she was I'm a no huge fan of Jean Harlow. Beautiful. Oh, wow. And so... Um, she, they chose Marilyn. She wanted Jean, but she always regretted that they chose Marilyn because she never liked the name Marilyn. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. She talked about that, like, later in her life, too. She mm-hmm. was like, I wish that they would have let me choose Jean because I liked the, na- the name Jean because she loved Jean so much. Um, so, let's see. Where are we? Um, she's gotten into Hollywood. So Johnny Hyde has a heart attack and dies. Johnny Hyde is her connection to Hollywood. And he's the one who's like paid for these things. Mm -hmm. He's like gotten her in with these studios. So she signs with Fox and she starts making some movies. Um, she makes some movies. She does really well. Um, she has created a persona for herself and a voice for herself mm-hmm. um, because people have told her that she needs to, like, tone her voice down. What? And I feel like there mm. there's something that I wrote in here. Where was it? I actually haven't seen a lot of her. I haven't seen, I don't think, any of her movies. Oh, they're really amazing. And I haven't even, like, heard her speak. You Which know, weird. <laughs> like, she you know, had, because she's so she's such a picture. Like, yeah, she's mm-hmm. like it's kind of image. like when you hear Princess Diana speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, you're like her, oh, I was just like, oh, that's her voice. Marilyn Monroe has a very distinctive voice that she cultivated. It wasn't her real voice. There's no way really? to her real voice. Oh my god, there are videos of her talking with her real voice in interviews, and in her last film that she didn't finish, she actually used her real voice. Wow. Which is my favorite film of hers that she didn't I wish there was a because it's her, she plays a mother, and she uses a real voice, and it's, like, one of, like, the truer films of her. Which film is that? Something's Gotta Give Mm. with Dean Martin. I want to put that, I I would love to, like, put that on the podcast. Oh, yeah, I've got um, tons of... um, Like, different audio. I don't think I've ever heard her real voice. I have... I love her I, movies. I feel like, for example, Audrey Hepburn has a very, like, mm-hmm. iconic voice mm-hmm. that I could, like, pick out. Like, she just that accent and, like, and I feel like... Which is proper. <laughs> I mean, not to compare or anything, but I yeah. feel like I've seen more, like, Audrey yeah. than I have Marilyn in terms of, like, films. Yeah. Even though Marilyn was a huge... Yeah. Like, huge. Like, so I don't know what that is, but... 
I think that her films, even though she won awards for her films and she was in really great films, like if you've seen All About Eve, fantastic film. She has a very small part in it, but it's, it's adorable. The Asphalt Jungle was a huge, like it just like slayed at the Oscars. Fantastic. Mm. She was in that. Um, Bus Stop was one of her fantastic films. I'm not a big fan of like one of her biggest films, which is... Um, uh, God, that fucking shit show with Jack Lemmon and um, Tony Curtis. Um, I don't know. Oh my God, why am I forgetting it? It's where they both dress as women. The Odd and Couple? No. no. <laughs> Tony Curtis made a comment after the film where he was like, kissing Marilyn is like kissing Hitler. And I was just like, fuck you, dude. Ew. Kissing this woman is not like kissing a man who is like murdered. No, how can you? That's not even. That's too soon. It was like, just like, <laughs> like, like the '50s. Like, how 50s? can you even make yeah. like, a comparison? Yeah. Jesus Do you Christ. know what it's like? And it was because Gross. she was like trying to get the scene. We'll talk about this, but yeah. like it was fucking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Not my favorite film. Um, and, 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 like, the poster of it has, like, Marilyn on their shoulders, and she, like, looks really aggressive and weird, and it's, like, this picture that they just, like, yeah. keep reproducing. It's terrible. I like so, How to Marry a Millionaire. John, that's one of my favorites. Oh, yeah, that is a fantastic It's movie. so cute. Um, so I wrote this um, from some of the stuff that I... Um, some of the stuff that I some learned... Some Like It True? Some Like It Hot. Some Like It Hot. Oh. Oh, yeah, that is a famous one. That's a super famous one that was, like, up for Oscars and... A website's coming up. Tony Curtis on Marilyn Monroe. It was like kissing Hitler. Yeah, such an asshole. Fuck that guy. Like, why would you even see... Such a shit... Like, what the fuck? And, like, saying that during a time when, like, people have actually been touched by Hitler. Like, fuck you, dude. That Well, that must have really fucked with her. Yeah. Like... Of course. Like, and to like, say that yeah. to any, like, yeah. 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 Oh, my God. So, what I found really interesting during this, like, new round of um, learning about Marilyn um, that I did in preparation for this podcast was that during the time when she was, like, coming up to be an actress, the studio wanted her to be a new kind of actress to draw men to theaters. Oh. So if you've seen movies in the 40s, you'll notice that a lot of the women are, like, bigger than life. It's like Catherine Hepburn. It's like Betty Davis. It's like, you know, they're, like, strong and they're, you know, they're cool and, they're like, they keep their head and they're really smart. And, mm-hmm. like, it's during the 40s when women were watching movies. So they're mm-hmm. now the studios are trying to get these men in the 50s to come to movies to and take their way like, yeah so they're just like oh like we want men to come to movies so we need a sexy lady so Marilyn you should come to the movies so they wanted um they wanted these men that had come home from war to come to the movies so a couple things that they did was they I don't know if you guys know that this is something that they used to do where they would raise people's hairlines what? Do you guys know about this? How? It's something that can still be done. They use electrolysis and they raise people's hairlines. So, like, her like hairline might have been, like, down here. Oh, okay. And they would raise it up here. So, like, if her forehead seemed too small, they would raise it with electrolysis. They did it with, like, most actresses. Wow. And, like, during this time, they would do that. They would, um... I wonder why. Because, because like, they had these, like, weird forms of beauty oh so, yeah like, we're talking about that. it was like um what are, they did a bunch of weird fucked up shit to like judy garland too which oh, like yeah. judy oh, garland yeah. and Marilyn at towards the end of Marilyn's life they finally connected and like Marilyn mm-hmm. was just like i see you like i we need well, to connect we, yeah. and then they like didn't Ooh, connect before she died i'd be interested to hear about that yeah, yeah, Judy, Judy Garland, talks about it. She was abused and everything as yeah, well. Wow. Yeah, totally. Like, the amount of drugs that they gave them were so insane. Mm-hmm. Like, the studios were just, like, pumping drugs out to them to, like, wake up, to sleep, to, like... Oh, yeah, yeah. here's your speed, now here's yeah. your quaaludes. Now here's yeah. your speed, now here's your And then your you're quaaludes. not supposed to eat, you're only supposed mm-hmm. to take these drugs. Like, yeah. I mean, it, like, it's no wonder that, like all these women that, like, started out acting so young were so short because they didn't get any fucking nutrients. Yeah. Wow. Like, look how small Judy Garland is. Was. Was. <clears throat> Did she die recently? A long time ago. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I don't know 60s. anything. <laughs> um, okay, so... 
So one of the so okay so Marilyn was started to be in movies. Um, she got a reputation um, for being late or not showing up at all, and this reputation increased the more successful that she got. And most of this was due to the condescension that she received from male co-stars and directors. She was also dyslexic, which wasn't diagnosed until after, like, a time after she was gone, because it wasn't diagnosed until later. And so they would rerun these scenes over and over, and they would be like, I want you to say, honey, I just got home. And she would just be like, I just got home, honey. And she would come in again. I just got home, honey. And she just kept saying it over and over. Oh, wow. Like, so... They didn't know how to diagnose it. She was also, like, a perfectionist, but it's, like, hard to say how much of that was the dyslexia and how much of it was, like, her. Mm -hmm. And then it was also just, like, these fucking asshole guys were just constantly condescending her and making her feel like shit. And so she was just, like, so, like, scared all the time to go on set because she was, like, such a perfectionist and she wanted to be taken seriously. I've heard that a lot about the 50s in Hollywood, yeah. Um, I remember when Debbie Reynolds they call passed them all away. Um, because Singing in the Rain is one of my very favorite movies, yeah. which is nothing to do with Marilyn Monroe, but yeah. she was... Around the same time. Yeah, and Singing in the Rain is Gene Kelly, and mm-hmm. he, he I was a top dancer growing up, and so he yeah. was somebody that I looked up to and loved, and he's in a bunch of my favorite movies, like Cover Girl and Singing in the Rain. And when she passed away, all these things surfaced, of course, of interviews with her, and they asked her about Singing in the Rain, because she was, oh, fuck, I don't remember her name now. She was the the, the, lead. the lead lady that Gene Kelly fell mm-hmm. in love with. And sh- they asked her how what that was like, and she said, oh, well, I didn't even know how to tap dance when I auditioned for that role, and I learned how because of that role, and he was so mean to me all of the time that it gave me anxiety. Mm-hmm. It, I have had anxiety ever since mm-hmm. because of Gene Kelly. And it was just, it was heartbreaking because I love Gene Kelly, but then yeah. I kept reading different accounts of different women like Marilyn Monroe and mm-hmm. Debbie Reynolds and Katherine Hepburn and Audrey Hepburn that worked with these men that were just yeah. fucking assholes. Yeah, no wonder because like these women would like They would go out amongst their fans and feel like queens, and then they would get on the set Mm -hmm. and feel like dogs. And, like, these guys would just, like, make them feel like shit and just, like, make fun of them. And just, like, they're trying to, like, pour their soul into this, like, craft. Yeah. And, like, these men aren't taking them seriously, and they're not respecting them. And then, like, they're expected to, like, pour so much of their, like, emotion into this. And, like, it's impossible. Yeah. It's so crazy. And so what's... What was frustrating, too, was that she also had stage fright and anxiety, of course, and um, she would demand these demand quotes, these retakes, because she wanted to be in full control of how the camera captured her. Right. Mm -hmm. And because, like, she knew one of the cool things about her was that she always knew how to respond to cameras and, like photographers were always so fucking in love with her because she knew when there was a camera in the room how to make that camera fall in love with her. And it was the same with film cameras too, which isn't always true of people that are good at in print. Mm-hmm. They're not always yeah. good in film, but she was good on both. And she knew how to do it and she would get like really severe anxiety if like she couldn't present a performance that was good on camera and also like emotionally good. Um, she also had the stammer that we talked about and the more nervous and anxious she would get, the more it would come out. Um, and so people told her to like lower her tone, which is why in a lot of her movies, she's just like, I'm Marilyn. And so she talks in this like very low, husky, breathy voice because she's trying to Happy birthday, Mr. President voice. Right. Mm -hmm. Like she's trying to lower her tone so that she can control it more and, like, she would just be like, I love this cheese. Oh, it's so good. Oh Where did you get these knives? Like, and, like, when you try to talk like Marilyn, you're, like, over-enunciating. you are just like, where did you get these knives? And you're like, if you watch her talk, like, she's over-enunciating yeah, she everything. Does. And she's, she's brought her tone down so much because she's, like, trying to control her stammer and her dyslexia and her anxiety in order to like 
put these lines through. Which is like, this that's insane. fucking crazy. But instead of paying the taxi cash, the check and put the money in his own pocket. But why didn't you tell it to the government? Well, I did, but you know how the government is. Couldn't be more sympathetic, but they still wanted the dough. Even after you told him that fellow was a crook? What did that mean? So far as they were concerned, the only crook in sight was me. I had to have some proof. That's why I had to get back here and get this check. Well, how do you like that? Then when I found out he'd gone to Kansas City, I jumped on a plane. He's either going to kick in with the money or I'm going to break his neck. Is that where he is? Kansas City? So I understand. Well, why are you going to Atlantic City? Who's going to Atlantic City? Doesn't this plane go to Atlantic City? What are you talking about? This is the Midland Sky Chief. Are you kidding? Of course not. We should be in Kansas City in about uh, 20 minutes. Why? Oh, nothing. Just one of those things. That's so intense. Is, I can't even imagine. Yeah, I can't which even is function why, when I'm having exactly. an anxiety day. I can't yeah. imagine having to act and not stammer and lower my voice. Yeah. And that's crazy. Yeah. And so she, um, she didn't have, like I said before, she didn't really have anything with her own voice except for some interviews. And in her last film, um, Something's Got to Give. There's a couple inter- uh, like interviewee-type movies that have come out called Marilyn, The Final Day or Marilyn, The Last Interview. And you can hear her talking in her regular voice. And it's fucking beautiful. Like, it's amazing to hear her just being like, hi, these are my friends that I'm staying with, blah, blah, blah. And, like, she's not just like, these are my friends that I'm staying with. Like, yeah. it's, it's like her normally talking. Penny, I'd like to just spout off on it, I may. Uh, we are all born sexual creatures, thank God. It's a pity so many people despise and crush this natural gift. Because art comes from that real art of everything. Wow. Which is cool. And which also makes you realize that, like, it is a persona. It's, like, something that she made for the film, which many people do. And, like, she... So many people just, like, didn't realize that it's, like, different from, like, who she is. And so, like, the people that realized that about her, like, she, like, really treasured. But it was, like, hard to tell. Just, like... And it's, it's this really sad thing with people that don't have a lot of friends when they become famous Mm -hmm. it's really hard to tell who your true friends are and who to trust it's really sad um so one of the cool things about marilyn is that she was her own makeup artist for a long time oh really mm -hmm. and so she um because you know she didn't have the money to have a makeup artist um she would do contouring and so I learned about facial contouring mm-hmm. when I was very young. I didn't know it was called contouring. I just thought it was called, like, shadowing. Mm-hmm. And I, I knew from these books that she would contour her nose because she had, like, a little bit of a bulbous nose like I do. She would contour it so it looked straight, and then she would always put a little dot of pink on the end. She would always outline her lips in a darker color around and then a lighter color in between. And then she would also contour her cheeks and her chin. And wow. Her she was doing that before Kim Kardashian, anybody. She was doing that yeah. on her own. She was also, like, working out and, like, doing, like, things before women, like, I mean, some women were, like, kind of working out, but, like, not really. I know that but, she like, did yoga a lot, too. Yeah, yeah, and she would, like, do, like, workouts for her arms because she was, like, concerned about her, like, breasts sagging Mm -hmm. um she did a lot of that and um she would get her hair bleached I don't I'm I think that she did her own hair for a time and then she when she started to become a little bit more successful when Mm -hmm. she got like um the um John Wimp for blondes and stuff like that she um developed a relationship with a makeup artist I'm forgetting his name Um, But he was the one that started plucking and um, grooming her eyebrows into, like, like an arrow kind of shape towards her forehead. Yeah. The Marilyn Arch. And really focusing on her beauty mark and, like, really honing in on the things that she had already been doing. Yeah. Which is really cool. So is that arch, like, 
Was that her thing? I mean, she She's has... the first one that really... Because if yeah. you look in the 30s, everyone's got rainbows. Yeah. Yeah, like, they do. The, mm-hmm. you know, really thin, like, almost drawn line, like, yeah. rainbows. And I guess... I don't know. I don't really know much about the 40s, but I feel like that was huge in oh, the 30s. Yeah. So, and I just always loved her arches. And she had, no, if you look at, like, the earlier films, she just has, like, normally eyebrows. But then once she gets with that makeup artist, um, I want to say his last name was, like, Whitey or Whiteley or Wiley. Um, and he actually stayed with her the rest of her life and, like, did her makeup for her when she died. And she gave him this money clip that said, like, Dear Wiley or Whiteley, I can't remember his last name, while I'm still warm, love Marilyn. And Ooh. so he, like, did his, wow. did her makeup for her when she was dead. Oh, wow. Very sweet. But um, he was the one that helped develop her into that eyebrow look. Yeah. Super was she, cool. Do you think she was, like, the first arch? I think that she was one of them. I think that she she, really made it what it... She was one of those people who had a very distinct view of what her persona needed Mm -hmm. to be. And um, one thing that's really interesting is by 1954, so this is like... She's been in Hollywood for like maybe five years. She's the top grossing star in Hollywood. She's like voted top star by all these magazines. She's the she's bringing the most money to any studio in Hollywood. She's still under the same contract with Fox that she started out with. So she's what? not making any more money Ugh. than she did when she was getting bit parts. So she's getting nothing. That's so So when you up. think about Marilyn, when she's wearing those fancy clothes, None of those are hers. She would go to the costume department before an event, before she would go to dinner or have a press release or go to, like, some show or whatever. She would go to the costume department on Fox, and she was friends with all the costumers, and she would ask to borrow an outfit, and then she would return it with, like, a 50 and, like, paper clip to the outfit. Wow. Like, she owned, like, no clothes. It was crazy. And so, well, um... Let's see. Which um, can so what were men making? I'm just like what was Clark Gable? Like? Oh yeah, I mean, I mean Gene yeah. Kelly. Yeah, um, like but I do mean, we even <laughs> just no, I know, but I'm just like you know, because Hollywood's Hollywood and it's yeah. harsh. I mean, for, like, just everyone, now, right? But like men are actually men declaring were that women should make what what yeah. men make in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, I'm sure they were making a hell of a lot more than she was yeah. because she couldn't even afford to buy a house in Hollywood at that time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like she was making the same amount that she was making as a walk-on actress. Right. So. You know, it gets to the point where she's making these big movies with all these bigger stars who have better contracts than her, and so she decides to contest her her contract with Fox. So she drops them, mm-hmm. and she um, starts a legal battle. And the press, even though she's friends with um, a lot of like gossip columnists, like Hedda. Uh, what is her name? Hedda something. Whatever. Um, a lot of gossip com- columnists at that time. Um, all of the news outlets are just like, oh, Marilyn is greedy. She's just like a little shrimpy boo. She doesn't know what she's doing. She's such a dummy. Because she keeps playing a dummy in all these parts. Because the... the, the, yeah. the and they show up a picture her. of her in this nice fur coat. Diamond exactly. And, and, and they're just like, oh, she wants more money. Yeah. And so um, she takes them to court. And um, Fox decides, like, oh, we're going to take you to court. And so it's, like, this stupid thing. And they realize, like, oh, shit, this is our highest grossing star. We can't lose her. Because, like, other, like, um, what is it? Uh, Film producers are just like, oh, we should jump on Marilyn. Literally. And they're just like, oh, no, 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 no. We'll do this show with you. We'll do, like, some year itch, and we'll give you, like, a 100K bonus. And Jay was just like, cool, cool, cool. Sounds great. Like, I'm glad that I held out. So then all the press is just like, Marilyn is a fantastic businesswoman. And so she's just like, Jesus fuck Christ. you guys. I can't trust you. You were just no. talking about me like I'm an idiot. And this happens, like, many times in her life. So, um... They actually never gave her that bonus. 
Um, <sighs> but during that time, what's really fucked up is that she was parodied in a film <laughs> right here. Wine. So yeah. instead of like the Fox, <laughs> like instead of like Fox being like adults, they fucking during that time when she was like away from them, like suing them, mm-hmm. they fucking made a film that parodied her, starring Jane Mansfield who was, like, um, basically, like, a Marilyn Monroe wannabe who played a dumb actress who started her own production company that failed because Marilyn Monroe was like, I'm starting my own production company starting called Marilyn Monroe Productions, and I don't need you anymore, blah, blah, blah. So she marries... Um, during that time, she marries to Joe DiMaggio. Um, it's, like, a good relationship, um, except that... He does not like that she's a star. So, like, they have their family. How can it be a good relationship if he doesn't like like, that she's a star? Exactly. (laughs) He's expecting, like, a woman that, like, wants to go home and, like, cook him dinner. An all-American wife. So they, like, have their honeymoon in <laughs> Japan. Yeah, because he's, like, the baseball man, Mm -hmm. world-around baseball man. Go to Japan for their honeymoon, expecting it to be all about him because it's a baseball tour. And oh. they're obsessed with her. It's so insane. She's, she's a bigger star than she she's is. A oh, star. of course she is. Yeah. She goes to Korea. He plays Lays baseball. The she's Marilyn Monroe. It's like, it's insane. And he realizes. And then the seven-year itch happens. And actually, that iconic scene with her on a subway grate is like a huge deal. Um, thousands of people turn out to see that shoot. And they don't even use that shoot in the video or in the film. It's because not it's in the like, movie, is it? Um, a different on a soundstage part is. It's like a very small moment, but in all of like the um, in all of like the promo for the film, it's mm-hmm. like on there. Um, but Joe is so upset that it's like basically the end of their marriage. However, they get How divorced. Are they married? Not very long, like nine months or something. Oh my God. But they get divorced and um, they remain good friends and bedfellows because, yeah. according to myth, Joe's the only man who can make her come. Ooh. Yeah. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. <laughs> good job. He had a couple kids from another marriage that she still kept in, like, close contact with. She loved them so much. She always wanted kids of her own. Um, unfortunately, she was never able to have any of her own kids, but she loved his kids. She loved Joe, um, but they, um, personality-wise, didn't work out. I can't remember what his sign was. Um, I can look. Yeah, I want to say that Arthur Miller was a Libra. I can't remember what Joe was. Um, But they just didn't work because she wanted to be in the spotlight and he wanted her to be at home. And he didn't like that so that millions of people wanted to have sex with her, basically, because she was a sex idol. Mm -hmm. Um, So after her divorce from Joe, she spent time. He's November 25th. So he's. Sag. Yeah. He's a Scorpio Sag cusp. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely He's like Valentine's Day maybe. Yeah, wow. he like wanted her to himself. Well, that um, makes sense. Yeah, of course. With his sense, I mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she, uh, she had a really good friend, um, Milton Green, who was a photographer who she really connected with and he had, uh, his wife, Anne Green, or maybe it was Amy. I want to say it was Anne. Um, she, she and Milton invited Meredith, Marilyn to come, <laughs> Meredith. That's hello. Me. Hi. Hi there. <laughs> um, they invited Marilyn to come to their home in Connecticut to spend the holidays with them and to take a little break from Hollywood um, after her and Joe went splitsville. So she went to Connecticut, and she had never been that close to, like, quote-unquote nature before. She'd never been in a place where you could just, like, take a walk along a river. Well, no, she grew up in Los Angeles. Yeah, Yeah. so, like, she didn't ever have that. And so she just, like, loved it, and she, like, really, like, relished her time there and really became, like, a part of their family and they had um, small children who she loved and loved her because she was like so sweet and she like had this ability to like be innocent and open to children and so like children really loved her Mm -hmm. and um, so during her time there Anne started to notice that like Marilyn's clothes were just like these 
old dresses that were way too small for her that she would wear all the time. And she didn't really have, like, loungewear except for this, like, old terry cloth bathrobe that was, like, threadbare. And so Marilyn would just, like, lounge around in this old terry cloth bathrobe and with, like, no makeup on or whatever. Like, of course, still beautiful. But, like, it's been said that, like, she looked totally different without her makeup on because she wasn't contouring her face. Like, she looked a lot younger. Mm-hmm. Her, probably her, like, age, because, like, she looked a little bit older when she would, like, um, contour her face. So, Anne had a lot of friends in New York who were fashion designers, and so she um, invited them to dinner and um, was just like, I have a friend that I want you to dress. And when they met Marilyn, they were just like, oh, Marilyn Monroe. Like, whoa, no. she's just like, you know, it's like kind of like thinking of like the basic bitch. It's just like, oh, she's like Hollywood. We're like New York. But then when they met her, she's just like so charming and so sweet. Like, um, you know, she would just like talk to them and like the way that like a Gemini woman can just kind of which like I don't know if you guys have many experiences with like Gemini women but like Uh they can really like talk to you like just like really get in there and like talk to you about like yourself and just like be like real and yeah yeah it's like very sweet and sincere one of my best friends is a Gemini woman yeah for us oh I mean for us crazy as all Geminis are. Mm-hmm. She is very much like that. And yeah. I, some, no, I don't wonder sometimes why we're friends. I know why we're friends, but it's insane how charming she is. Yeah. It's crazy. Some of my, I mean, she's beautiful you know. anyway, and I'm not discrediting her, but like she can charm her way into yeah. anything and it's mesmerizing to yeah. watch. There's something about Gemini women that is very mesmerizing and like, I feel like they have this, like, weird charm look that is different from, like, a Sagittarian's look. Yeah, they do. Um, Where, like, I had a Gemini best friend growing up who, like, she was always, like, if there was, like, a crowd full of people and they were picking somebody, they would always pick her. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, what the fuck? Like, I would get so mad because they would always pick her. But, like, there's just, like, something about Gemini women and, like, the way that their face is or, like, the way that they present themselves. I'm not sure. They're, like, shiny and bright. Yeah, there's some... Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite people... They do. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite people is a Gemini, and that's Elena. Yeah. Who we're going to podcast with because she does burlesque. Oh, yeah. And I... She's just one of my favorite She's amazing. And, like, you just can't... Mm -hmm. You just can't... There's no way you can be mad at her or, like, just, like, she's just, like... You know, I just feel like Mm -hmm. there's... I've had friends with other Gemini women, too, and I feel like there is something about them that just feels, like, very, like... Okay, I'm on your side, you know. Like you yeah, want to be yeah. on their side, or yeah. it's true. I mean, I've gone to. I mean, we live in Rochester, so there's not much around, but we're in the big city today. <laughs> yeah, Portland, uh, Oregon. Yeah. Hi. Portland. <laughs> but my friend and I would go to. She really likes the casino, and that's the closest thing to her house in Rochester. So her husband, who's so sweet, will drive us there, and. Her and I will be minding our own business completely. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, and Amanda's beautiful, but, and men will just walk up and be like, can I buy you a drink? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and exactly. It's just like, and she's like, what? I mean, no, if you're going to buy it and walk away, but like, yeah. no. And she went to the same, same casino, which always has guests and singers and things. And uh, the Thunder Down Under apparently was performing. And she just happened upon them in the bar. And they, I mean, there were a million women there. And they all were like, we want you to buy us shots. And I just was like, how the fuck do you always do this? And she was mm-hmm. like, I don't know. It's just dumb mm-hmm. luck. And I'm like, it's because you're a fucking Gemini. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there's something about Geminis that's really crazy. And, like, it's really frustrating to non-Geminis that like they it's really frustrating to my Leo son fucking yeah because it's just like I get the attention what are you I talking about hair is better than everybody come on god but there was this really cool moment when Marilyn was living 
uh, with in Connecticut with um, Anne and Milton Green, where Anne just was just like, we got to class you up, dude. Like, you're wearing these, like, weird, like, stretchy clothes that are well, way too tight for you. Else. Exactly. Way too tight for you in Los Angeles and, like, way not okay in Connecticut. Like, oh, Connecticut is just, like, you know, totally different. So she gets all of... Exactly. <laughs> so she, like, gets all of these fashion designers in New York to um, come and design some clothes for Marilyn, and they like of course would love to because they like meet her and they're just like oh my god she's so charming and sweet um charming is such a great word for gemini's mm-hmm. and gemini women not gemini men sorry gemini men no you're not charming there's special um that. yeah definitely um and so they they uh, start to um, help her develop a sense of style mm. outside of like what she's borrowing from the um, the studios, the studios. and Anne gift wraps it all and puts it under the tree so that Marilyn doesn't feel like she needs to buy anything because like Marilyn Milt or Anne and Milton have the means to like buy clothes for Marilyn, which is really sweet That's because amazing. Milton is a photographer. I don't know what Anne does, but maybe she has her own money. But either way, they have they the have means it. to do it, and Marilyn does not by any means. And Which so, is still so insane to me. Like, yeah, I'm still trying to wrap my brain around that part of yeah. it. That she was so. I mean, they couldn't do any of it without her, and mm-hmm. they wouldn't pay her. Yeah, it's yeah, just no, unreal. it's it's fucking ridiculous. And so um, they like look after her, and um, she was still talking to Joe DiMaggio from time to time. She was still, like, in contact with Joe DiMaggio most of her life, and he was still so in love with her, and um, they would still, like, meet up and have their, like, little trysts from time to time. Um, And so it was, like, an amicable divorce. Um, But she was still, like, you know, really, like, you know, licking her wounds and having her time in Connecticut, and that was, like, a really beautiful time. And there's a really beautiful um, video that I found on YouTube, and I can't remember what it's called, but it's, like, of her time there um, with Ann and Milton and their kids, and you see Marilyn there, and she's talking in her own voice and um, playing with the kids, and um, it's beautiful. Wow. And she's just, like, hanging out with this, like, normie, like, New England couple. And it's really interesting to see her in that environment because you always, like, think of yeah. her in L.A. And in that kind of environment, do you know or do you speculate that people called her Norma Jean? Or did they call oh, they her called Oh, they all called her Marilyn. Did they really? Yeah. Even mm-hmm. though that's not who she... I mean... Yeah, they all called her Marilyn. Wow, mm-hmm. that's interesting to me. Yeah. Nobody ever called her Norma Jean. Oh, wow. Um, so for Elton John years later. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Exactly. Okay. Um, but so during that time, she decided that she was going to move to New York and study at the Actors Studio, mm. which was a huge deal because the Actors Studio is where, like, Marlon Brando taught or, like, where he studied. Um, and the Strasbergs... Lee and um, I'm forgetting his wife's name. And these um, are the people that have her estate or yeah. who had her estate. Yeah. So, oh, okay. so Mar- now we're this really- is like a common thing in Marilyn's life where there's couples that she meets that basically like adopt her and it's like Mm -hmm. with Ann and Milton Mm -hmm. they like kind of adopted her for a time took care of her and like What's really crazy is, like, I can totally relate to that because, like, Isaac and I have totally adopted people over the years that are adults where, like, there's, like, a time where they, like, need things. Like Chucky. And, yeah, like Chucky or, like, like multiple people in our lives where, like, we will, like, quote-unquote adopt them mm-hmm. and just be, like, this is how you do these things and, like, let us, like, pay for these things and help you and, like... It gives us so much joy, and, like, we love helping people, and we love, like, being there for people, and, like, we don't ask anything in return except for friendship and just, like, being, like, your people. And, like, some people get, like, really weird and, like, 
are just like, I don't know how to give anything back to you. And it's just like, we're not asking for anything back. We just want to be your buddies. Yeah. Like, it's like, we just want to like give back because we don't have that much to give back. So we just want to like be there to like guide you. And so like, it seems like there was a lot of people in Marilyn's life that were like that, especially couples. And so like, I really relate to this part of her life where she was um, adopted by many couples that were, like, trying to, like, help her. And so she moved to New York, and she was studying in the actor studio, and she would, like, show up without any makeup and, like, put, like, a scarf over her head. And there, like, she was trying, like, she would sit in the back and just, like, get called down and like talk really quietly and just like be really shy because she didn't want to she didn't want the attention yeah Yeah. and of course people knew who she was because she was like world renowned that's true Mm -hmm. but um there was one instance that people have talked about where the um whatever uh teacher it was called her up and was just like asking her to react to a scene in her life and she started talking about a time when like a man came in the room and um she just like dissolved into like weeping and screaming and they based on like what she said in that actor's studio they think that that was like her resurgence of when she was eight years old and like reliving that experience because what the actor's studio was, was, um, which Marlon Brando was like a huge proponent of this. And like many other actors did this too, was like, you can't feel emotion unless you've already felt it. Mm. I think it like, it, it's basically, um, you have to, like, use your own experiences to right. feel something. Right. So, like, you can't you can't create feeling or emotion. You have to, like, go into emotions that you've already felt. Mm-hmm. And, like, humans have felt, like, the full, like, wheel of emotions. And so you have to, like, look into every time you've, like, felt certain emotions and mm-hmm. then delve into that to use that in acting like you can't mm-hmm. like there's no acting it's like replaying what's happened in your well, life you're basically. finding a different space within yourself that you've already lived yeah which exactly. is like um for for the fact that she had sexual abuse at the age of eight yeah there's i mean coming from my class in developmental psychology you're like your um, trauma experience at that time, like, every time you go to that place, you mm-hmm. go to that place. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you you have to do a lot of work mm-hmm. in order for you not to, like, re-experience that. Yeah. So a lot of people will avoid it, and a lot of people will, like, you know, do therapy or whatever. And so that must have been a... I mean, I can imagine it could, could have been a very traumatic experience for her, yeah. obviously. And... Um, with that whole philosophy on in the actor's studio, like, yeah, a man walks into a room and, you're, and she's there. Yeah, yeah, that's oh. exactly. I mean, that is exactly what she was doing. Yeah, because like, um, there was um, this really interesting um, quote. Let's see, um, this quote from this director that was really impressed with her acting. Um, who said she was not pretending to an emotion. It was the real thing. She would go deep down within herself and find it and bring it up into conscience, consciousness, which, like, is, like, something that if you look into other actresses at this time, they all have similar experiences to Marilyn Monroe in terms of, like, mm-hmm. being called difficult and blah 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 And with many of them there will be an like a director or someone that says who's who just fucking gets it and they're just like whatever people are saying right. it's worth it because what they're bringing on screen is worth it and so like the fact that Marilyn would be late 
or not show up at all or whatever. When she did show up, she fucking showed up. Yeah, she was And there. she fucking made that work. And she knew what she wanted. And, like, it sucks because she wasn't Joan Crawford and she wasn't Buddy Davis. So, like, she didn't have these, like, big shoulders and, like, these like yeah. cloudy things like she was just herself and she didn't have a lot of support from the women in Hollywood or just women in general and so she would show up and just be like no I want to do it this way and like people would laugh at her and like make fun of her and like her especially her co-stars most of them and she would just be like this is how it needs to be done like I need I need to be shown the way that I need to be shown it's so insane to me that yeah. she was so unsupported by women. Yeah. In Hollywood, especially, but women in I, general until well, after she I died. Well, I heard she was. Because now a she's a female friend. icon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, a lot were, of people a lot were, of women were probably threatened. Well, I'm by sure. Yeah. That's because not of her like, beauty and, yeah. and this persona that was. Like yeah, it's just rejected, I it's guess. just so amazing to me because she's such a female icon now that yeah, yeah. thinking of. Like if I if you were to ever go back in history and watch that happen to her, just yeah. you'd be baffled to be like, she, yeah. you're not the female icon though she is. So yeah. shut right. up. Well, well that's as you explain this too, I'm like feeling the loneliness. Yeah, like, there is so much fucking loneliness in Marilyn Monroe's life. It is so sad, and when you read so many books about her you realize that she really didn't have a lot of female friends and a lot of the female friends that she had would take advantage of her. Mm -hmm. But there is one friendship that I have always really loved, Mm -hmm. and that was her friendship with Ella Fitzgerald. Yes, I do, and we're podcasting about her on Sunday. (laughs) And so happy. Yeah. It's in it, that it's so you tell the story because yeah. I, I, I'm so happy right now. It's just so like funny you. that you, I mean, it's kismet. Like, yeah, you're yeah, just like for sure. so ready. Totally. Well, this is really cool because Marilyn, um, she had ideas that were before her time. Um, oh, okay. She had lots of friends that were gay who would help her with hair and makeup and clothes. And, like, she would talk about them sometimes in her writing and, like, b- refer to, like, Hollywood men and be like, I know, like, basically be like, I know they're gay, but they're not out like this guy. You know, like, and, like, say that in Mm -hmm. her journal. Um, And, of course, she had friends that were black. And one of the friends that she had was Ella Fitzgerald. And there was a club in L.A. that refused to um, let Ella Fitzgerald perform. Right. And she went... I've heard of this, actually, yes. Yeah, so cool. She went to the club, and she... Um, Ella had contacted her. I don't know how Ella had contacted her, but I knew that Marilyn was Marilyn was a fan, and she found out somehow that Ella wasn't able to perform in this club in L.A., much less any clubs in L.A. Mm-hmm. And so Marilyn went to the club promoter, and she said, if you let Ella play at this club, I will sit in the front like table every night that she's playing and the club promoter was just like uh really (laughs) and she was just like yeah and so she did uh she sat in the front row like for a week or two I can't remember how long um every night that Ella was there she um sat in the front row and it was I believe that it was Ella's first chance to um perform in LA clubs or at I, least yeah, in that kind of LA club. Yeah. I don't know for sure. But it, it was, was a huge club deal. That put her on the map. Exactly. To, to be a, a star. Because I mean, and like yeah. what's so f- I mean, it's just so fucked up that it like is. that even needed to happen. But the fact that Marilyn was just like, no no, I'm and gonna she used like, her she white used, privilege for she used good. Her power exactly. for everything. Which is now what so many women of color are trying to ask white women to do mm-hmm. and it's amazing yeah. that we can I mean we can learn that we from we can look back at Marilyn Monroe, Monroe and just be and like hey guys yeah we've done this we've done this before doors. why aren't we doing it now let's my, go mm-hmm. my friend in high school we both had a love affair with Ella oh. and she had this poster of that well on there's your a last picture. day at the farm we listened to Ella all there's day. a picture <laughs> Of Ella singing at a club and Marilyn's in the front row. Oh, I don't know if I've seen 
that. It's a poster, and I'm it's like, beautiful. I know this story. Yeah. Like, that's crazy that I just, like, now thought of that. I forgot that Marilyn was in that photo, but I was mm-hmm. just like, no, yeah, I know this. I, it's yeah. so cool. Yeah, it's so cool. And I brought so much, like, stuff to their club. And and I think, like, Duke Ellington, there was something going on there. A few people. Yeah, maybe. Ella did a lot of stuff with Duke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And with Louie. Yeah. Yeah, tons of stuff. It was so really cool. cool. Um, so after Marilyn... It just makes my heart really happy. <laughs> I know, it makes me so happy. Um, so after Marilyn was in, um, the actor's studio, she met Arthur Miller. And Arthur Miller, you might remember as being the author of The Crucible. Mm-hmm. And Death of a Salesman. We were just talking about mm-hmm. this, too. I was like, she needs to see that movie. He was a I Libra. haven't. I know. I'm a witch, and I've never seen The Crucible. <laughs> he was fine. I mean, Arthur Miller was a Libra. I feel like he... Oh, I, I get it, though. That, that actually makes sense. Because <laughs> I've seen this Crucible, and I'm... Yeah. I'm he <laughs> Libra. Right. He wrote that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure. It was The Crucible and The Death of a Salesman. Will you look that yes. up? Yes. I'm, I know it was Death of a Salesman. I've seen the play I'm Death, pretty sure it's the Death of a Salesman. I had to read it also. Yeah. yeah. Playwright Arthur Miller. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Oof. Oof. Um, okay. <laughs> so she married him after Joe DiMaggio. And really? She was so excited about this marriage because she loved him. She thought that he was so smart and so funny and nice and like... He was interested in her, and he thought that she was interesting, and he made her feel really good. And so, like, one thing that, like, was, like, something that she looked for in men was, like, that they thought that she was intelligent, Mm -hmm. and they thought that she was interesting, and that she wasn't a burden on them. She never wanted to embarrass anyone, and she just... She never wanted to let anyone down, of course. But, like, she was always in this constant fear. She wanted to fear. be the opposite of what she was when she was eight. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. God. And so she married Arthur Miller. And during that time, he was being investigated by the feds for communism. Um, and it said that it, if it wasn't because he was, like... Um, you know, co- cohorting with like a lot of like known communists. I it's forgot that said there's a time in the our Red Scare. That it was yeah, to be communist. Yeah, mm-hmm. it said that if it wasn't for his relationship with her, his his um his career would have been ruined because she went to trial for him and she talked about it. So wow. she would like go to parties with him and she loved it. Like she loved hopnobbing with people. She met Truman Capote and she became Ooh. really good friends with Truman Capote. Mm. And actually Truman Capote um, really wanted her to play he Holly did. Gomez yeah, I remember this. Yeah. Breakfast at Tiffany's. Yeah. But the studio didn't want her. They and so Audrey. they wanted Audrey. And so Audrey did it. Um, so Which, I mean it would have been iconic if it was Marilyn, but it's yeah. iconic it's because it's iconic, iconic. I know. nevertheless, yeah. But I, I think it could have done like, well in either of them. Yeah, I for sure. I can sure, see right? if I think about it and I like try to play the movie with Marilyn instead of Holly in my head. It makes per- or instead yeah. of Audrey in my head. It, it makes almost makes sense. like a little bit more sense with Marilyn because it she does. has that, like history of being like kind of like a Lucy girl. But what's interesting is that the 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 studio really wanted her to cut ties with him, and this was before she was married to him. Um, she uh, she spoke for him in um, I believe it was before they were married. Um, in in. Uh, to the feds she like spoke for him and the studio was just like very adamant about wanting her not to and to cut ties and like once the um trial was over she was just like you all are born cowards which i thought was just like amazing such an incredible thing to say about people and like she just always had like something really good to say about people um a lot of people made fun of her marriage to arthur miller in the press saying like egg Hallad marries bombshell and like she took a lot of offense to that because she was just like she wanted to be seen as an intellectual because she was incredibly intelligent like yeah. most Geminis are especially with an Aquarius moon and a Leo rising mm-hmm. I yeah. mean incredibly driven and intelligent they wanted to be known that they're intelligent exactly and um 
she wanted to be known that she was intelligent. She wanted um, people to know that she was marrying Arthur because of love and because he respected her and blah, blah, blah. Um, so it, it is um, frustrating that that happened. Um, one thing that people didn't realize is that Marilyn Monroe had endometriosis, which is why um, a, another reason why she would be late or absent from absent from set, and she would usually have it written into her contracts in a movie that she couldn't perform during a set amount during the month. Because of her endometriosis, she underwent a ton. Endometriosis is um, when you have a period that bleeds in other parts outside of your. um, It's really really painful. Uterus or your. um, uh, Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. No, not you're. You're not bleeding here. You're bleeding in other places. In your side. Yeah, inside. Um, so you might be like bleeding in like parts of your like fallopian tubes or your okay. like actual uterus, but like not so your the bleeding like, actually happens canal or whatever further up the uterus in like sometimes the tubes over your it's it's actually still really difficult to diagnose right. and mm-hmm. still really difficult to treat, which is fucked up. And that a lot happens. of doctors say that a lot of women get diagnosed after years and years and years of telling their doctor I'm in so much pain that right. I can't mm-hmm. move when I'm on my period yeah. and they're like oh it's just PMS you're just a woman but a bear. Yeah. right or whatever yeah. and then come to find out they actually yeah. have endometriosis yeah. and it's a real thing and it's right. awful and painful and yeah. you can develop it from certain types of birth control too right. yeah, it's really and it's terrible. really hard to diagnose it's super hard to treat you can't, and it's almost impossible to have children sometimes. Yeah, mm-hmm. and a lot of people that can't have children, like Marilyn Monroe, wasn't able to have children. She did. She got a ton of uh, surgeries from it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, really, really. My sad. Gemini and I friend we were talking about has a ton of surgeries from hers as well. So sad. Yeah. Um, so that was one of the reasons why she would be, like, late or yeah. absent from set, even though it was, like, written into her contract. But, of course, people didn't realize what endometriosis was, and they didn't fucking care. No, and they still, they still so don't. So shitty. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, so she was, so she also suffered an ecotopic pregnancy when she was with Arthur, mm-hmm. Arthur Miller, which was incredibly painful, I'm sure. Um, because she wanted to be a mom so badly, um, because she had such a shitty childhood. She wanted to, like, redeem that. Um, so one of the last films that she made, um, her last complete film, was The Misfits. Um, Arthur Miller wrote it and based it on her. Mm. So sweet, except that before they started shooting, she came across his journal in their house in New York and the page that was open said something about how Marilyn had embarrassed him at a party just by being herself. Oh no. And it brought up all of her anxieties about Mm. wanting to be like there for her partner and not to be an embarrassment and like wanting to support her partner and like it was a huge deal um well she was really excited about this relationship mm -hmm. and she she was a perfectionist and yeah yeah never wanted to embarrass anybody yeah like super sad like imagine Mm -hmm. like being in this relationship being like so proud being in this relationship where you're finally being seen for like being intellectual and being who you are yeah, and you. like hobnobbing with like people who are intellectual and then like you come across your partner's journal entry about at a party with all of these people that you admire and respect and he's embarrassed by you and he's always embarrassed by you oh. and like it was just like it was way too much and so sad and so um they continued their marriage in New York for a little bit longer, and then they went to, I believe it was, like, New Mexico or Arizona or something to to film The Misfits, which is the only film that she's with in Clark Gable, who is her dream dad that she always imagined that her right. mom right. had been with, but it wasn't true. 
Um, it's about a recent divorcee who befriends three cowboys who are all... <laughs> No, she loved him. Oh, they okay, were good. Good. I was like, he's God, he's not like another one not of those. actually been a dick. That's yeah, great. Yeah, they were great. Yeah. Um, she was fine with everybody on set. However, um, Arthur Miller based this, like, really um, kind of, like, unhinged divorcee character on her. And so, like, Ugh. that made her feel super... Shitty. Shitty. And then he would, like, rewrite scenes and dialogue the night before the shoot. And so then, like, she didn't have any time to prepare. And then it's, like, about her, and she, like, feels super insecure. That's and awful. then like Yeah, super fucked up. And, get this, on top of it, he was falling in love with the set photographer that he what? married. Oh, people As are soon awful. as the film wrapped, they got a divorce... And he married the set photographer, who he Jesus had been courting during the film. Christ. Yeah, I have a really superficial question, which is what like everybody yeah. knows of Marilyn Monroe. Where where do the Kennedys fall into all of this? Oh, it's coming. Oh, th- th- that has it's not happened even happening yet? yet. Yeah, fucking a. dude. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm so Girl, sorry. I'm There's so, so much. No, no, I'm not. So, I'm not bored or okay. anything. I just. No. I, for some She's reason, just thought got that such maybe... such a huge story that I didn't know about. Yeah, yeah, same, because, like, that, like, we've talked about that day you told me, because, can I, can I say Yeah, please. Thing? So, one of my favorite things that you have ever told me about yourself is that when you get too drunk, you're not allowed to talk about three things. <laughs> Skincare? <laughs> Skincare? No. Oh, is it four? It should be. It's oh, Chicago, my God. <laughs> it's Chicago politics. Uh, Beyonce. No, astrology. Oh, I thought Beyonce was a new one. Okay, oh. astro- Okay, Chicago it politics, changes. <laughs> astrology, and Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. And so now here it's we are on care. our podcast making, <laughs> not, we're not forcing you to drink, you're willingly drinking. <laughs> she just, this she just got up and poured I herself mean, a new glass. I mean, this is why the podcast has been going on for this long. Yeah. Would you like one? Yes. Do you want to pause it and I'll get it, one? I'll get it, I'll get it. Um, there's basically a some soda. It's from Pock Pock. Um, with uh, some gin? Yeah, with just okay. some gin. Um, and there's ice in the ice box, too. Think. Yeah, but, I mean, those are the three things that you're not allowed to <laughs> yeah. talk about usually when you're drinking because you'll go into so much detail. But this is what this podcast is for, is to bring awareness to women like Marilyn Monroe, who everybody just thinks is a blonde beautiful yeah. actress who dated There's a Kennedy so and, and the wrong Kennedy actually mm-hmm. do let us know if you need like a break or like yeah. we can thank pause you. it anytime because I know you are definitely like in the spotlight and oh I, 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 I want you to be taken care of <laughs> oh my god thank you because <laughs> I know funny. it's like you're talking <laughs> essentially the entire time I fucking love it I'm Leah Rising so. <laughs> you're like okay I get to talk and I'm finally like able to like drink and talk about my like dream thing. So like when you guys yeah. want to do a podcast about Chicago politics, just let me know. Oh my, oh my god, god, I totally <laughs> do because I don't know anything about Chicago politics. How All I, I know is we, like, we made you catch up on Bachelor in Paradise. I would have you talked about it, but grocery store Joe is from Chicago. Oh yeah. no, and so I can do his face. accent so good. Oh my god, because I she really like hear. lost it in the car. Because she was talking about how this last episode when Leah was like grocery, grocery store, store bitch. bitch and he's like and I was like you want to tell you want to tell it to my face or something I don't know I said it want to say it to my face you want to say it to my face or something Wait, no that like, sounds you too to, like, <laughs> you want which is really fucked up that I grew it's, up there and I'm you can't, really the Chicago accent is very difficult you want to say it, it to my to my face? Yeah. No. You want to see like, it to my face? It's like yeah. a long A. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's really hard mm-hmm. to do. And I like, <sighs> it's really hard to do. family talks like this. But like, let's you just go to say the in the car. You like, want to say, I had, I say it to my I, face? I had like an instant reaction it and it worked. And it was perfect. And, I, and it was perfect. I can't do it now because it's like I'm talking about it. But like, I loved um, his like intro when he's like, I'm back. And I'm yes. Like, yes. I'm back. <laughs> yep. I'm back because my, um, my brother-in-law is from Chicago. And he knows Oh my it all. God. Because he, he says caught instead of did caught. You ca- did you catch? No. Did you, if you, it's you like caught it a fish. really. You caught a fish. You caught a fish. You didn't catch. But it's like it's, fish. Ju- it's oh. hard to differentiate it between the New York accent and like. That's since true. I moved away when I was like, I mean, basically eighteen because I was in school. But like, my parents talk like that. Talk like that. Mm-hmm. My parents talk like that. 
Yeah. Chicago is it's how very it talks. Yeah. It's very it's yeah. like it's like hey, it's can like I, a, Where's the bathroom? Do you, you know where the bathroom is? You want to okay. see it to my face? You want to see it to my face? Yeah, okay. it's like a mix yeah. of New York and Midwest. Yes. Like, it's, it's so, like Fargo meets Brooklyn. Yes. And it's, <laughs> so, it's so hard. It's so hard to... Yeah, I can't even... I do can't you, even do it. I want to know, and, and I kind of want to ask Isaac this, is it when you get mad, do you start going to that place? Because um, I've heard you that. when you like, were talking about the plant, so I'm assuming... I did it? <laughs> no, I don't think I do. I think... <laughs> Over the plant. <laughs> hey, that's my plant of water. Um, oh, water. <laughs> water. That's my plant See, of water. Okay, I have questions water. about the like water, water thing because my grandmother is not from Chicago. She is born and raised in Graham, Washington. No one really knows. I, I don't think her family was from Chicago or anything I don't before. Know what it is, but, but there's she like a says water Washington and a towel thing. She Cal. says Washington. She says Wash. washcloth. That's wash like, your that's hands. Yeah. Where the fuck? That's where. I that's a generational like a, thing. Yeah. My, that like anyone over the age of like 55, mm. 60, like really? talks like that. Yeah. yeah. Weird. Yeah. yeah. Totally. It freaks yeah. yeah. See, like I like ugh, I pick it up, yeah. and that's why I'm gonna be that really annoying person. Oh, you're coming back. <laughs> London and you're gonna be like, hey, you got a washcloth? And they're just I'm like, gonna be like, where's the water closet? No. I'm gonna like say <laughs> you was weird and like, yeah, where's uh, the water closet? <laughs> and like say like weird thing like like you got a washcloth? Every time I go, I'm gonna have a different American accent. Yes, please do. Okay. Yes. Oh my god. I'm, god. I'm totally into it. And, and it's going to be an experiment. going to channel Madonna, and you're just gonna have the Madonna Oh accent. my god. The yeah. Madonna what's accent what's of Madonna like is? all cultures of the world. It's like, it's, have you watched Shit's Creek yet on Netflix? <laughs> what is that? Oh, Shit. It's so good. No, I haven't heard of it. Oh that. my god, it's so funny. But the. Uh, I can't remember her name. She's the mom in Home Alone. Oh, I love her. She's in it. And she <laughs> she's like got this weird accent and it sounds oh, she's like she's also... trying to be British, but she just uh, you know, uh, David, I just can't stand it when I talk like that. It's very strange. I don't I can't do it. But anyway, uh, you're gonna adopt But I am. An it's like My that friend episode Jenna. of Friends where their friend comes back from London and she's like, "Hey, and she's like very obnoxious. You didn't want annoying. to call me on my mobile. Why'd you get on my mobile? <laughs> yes. My mobile. My mobile. Oh, so much. Oh my god. My friend Jenna moved to England. Her husband is from there, and she got yeah, married, and she moved there. And I, she's on baby number two now. But I think a couple of years ago, she had baby shower, and I went with my mom, and I hadn't seen her in a long time. And I was talking to her, and I asked her a question, and she was working. I, Jenna, I'm so sorry if you listened to this. I didn't remember. What oh, it's actually still going. Were. But mm-hmm. she was working in some Smart. direction of with like the the church, but like the the royals church. Oh, the Church of England. Yes, the Church of England. That, Which yeah, is weird. One. Can I side super side note? Yeah, of course. When I went, I in order to see inside the Westminster Abbey on a Sunday, you had to attend a service. Yeah. yeah. So we went to a service, and they like pray to the God for the royal family, and they list everyone. Well, oh, I thought, yeah, like the God to God. I'm just saying, like, like God, <laughs> please watch out after, and then they like, which is just like. I come from a very religious family. It was very interesting to, like, that to be, like... They a list everybody in the royal family. In, in the yes. immediate royal family, like, to, like, almost, like, they're, because they're sovereign. Yes, because... Because God um, chose them. Right, because that's not an it's, attitude that was just Louis XIV. <laughs> I'm going to see how many... The son. I mean, I'm... That was... We need to do it. I'm sorry. No, Louis that's Couture, She brings it up in everyone. I, I do. It's my personal goal to bring it up in yes. every single episode. Louis XIV. Louis XV yeah, was the son king. Louis XIV was the one before him. Oh, and okay. I mean, and he was the one that said he was ordained by God, but it very much went into every other... European nation and probably others. I just haven't researched them, but Queen. I mean, that's what Queen Elizabeth believes, or I she thought that. she believes. Yeah, and I thought that. they always have thought that they that God just wanted them to be kings and queens. Well, it makes sense. I mean, because you have you know God chooses who's king, right? Like 
whatever. It's so they're the chosen ones and they're sovereign. And so I just think it's interesting that like that's like everyone prays for the Rath family. Anyway. I wonder what that's is that why they like don't seem to have hardships ever is because everybody prays for them and they believe there's yeah, power in numbers. Because prayer works. Because oh, money works. God. Money because works. Because power works. Yeah, and Meghan Markle, she made her mark there. I love her, by the way. I do too. She made her markle. Um, so we had talked outside about how Marilyn was um, in a couple films that are iconic, especially Bus Stop is a fantastic film um, that she won. I believe she won a Golden Globe for. Um, she never won an Oscar, but she did. Um, really? No. Yeah. Yes. Um, she didn't win an Oscar, but she uh, gave an Oscar away, like um, presented an Oscar at mm. some point. And the Oscars were like in their like baby form then. Mm-hmm. Um, same with the Golden Globes. But she did get a Golden Globe, I believe, for Bus Stop um, because she... It's a fantastic film. It's really interesting. And she insisted on like doing her own makeup and like doing it in like this way that like didn't look like she was like uh didn't look like she was like trying to be like beautiful and she also like wore more like clothes that weren't like the most beautiful like not the most like flattering Mm -hmm. um to like kind of like personify her um thing um, the next film that was, like, really good for her was, um, fucking Tony Curtis and, and Jack Lemmon, where they oh, that were one. women, and it was, it was a black and white film, and, some like, like it Some Like It Hot, which is, like, her most iconic film, because, like, they got a bunch of accolades for it, she won a Golden Globe for it, and, um, they... Neither, I don't know how Jack Lemon was Is towards her. Is this the her. Jack Lemon that was in like Grumpy Old Men? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. God, that's the only movie I've ever seen. Like I've yeah. never seen his other I know. movies. Yeah, he was in, um, I believe he was in The Apartment, too, which mm-hmm. is a fantastic film. Um, I haven't seen like a lot of his stuff, but um, Tony Curtis made this comment um, after the film that kissing... Marilyn was like kissing Hitler, which we talked about that like that's like a really fucked up thing to say because it was like right well, how after do you even get there in your brain. Right that's after World know. War Two. It's just like so kissing gross. Marilyn Monroe is like kissing Hitler and it's just like did Marilyn Monroe kill millions of people? Right. Is no. she a fucking dictator or like tyrant? Like what the fuck are you talking about? Like you kissed her and you're still alive. Like what the fuck are you yes. talking like that's mm. fucking crazy. It's not even a comparison that makes any sense. It no. doesn't make any sense. And the reason that he said it was because Marilyn wanted to like retake the the scenes over and over to get it right. And so that's why he said it. It was because she like she needed to get it right. And it was just like that's fucking ridiculous. Fuck you, Tony Curtis. And like because of that film, like when I watched that film, like knowing so much about like so like in my like journey of Marilyn, like I would like watch these films. Sorry, the um, journey. I just can't anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, this is a journey. Um, when when I was like reading a lot of like biographies about her, I would like watch the movies and like get them from the library um, because it was before you could watch movies online. Um, I watched that movie and I was like not impressed because I was like so frustrated with Tony Curtis for saying that and like so frustrated with the way that men treated her and like. I feel like a lot of the films wanted her to act in this way that, like, wasn't her, and it was really frustrating. Yeah, that is really aggressive. Yeah, so, like, the main (laughs) photo that they use for Some Like It Hot is this, like, really disgusting photo where she's, like... She's winking. Winking, but it's, like, this weird photo where she's, like, on top of them in this weird pyramid, and it's, like, really gross-looking. Was she like upset about that photo? I can't. I don't think so. But um, okay, so that was before she did the Misfits, Um, and so the Misfits was her last film. 
So she was having some health problems, and her therapist at the time committed her to this um, home that, according to the therapist, she thought it was just, like, an inpatient clinic that would, like, help her. Unfortunately, she committed her to an insane asylum where Marilyn could not get out of her own accord. And they put her in a padded room, and um, Marilyn was, like, Marilyn had tried to kill herself at least once in her life, but at that point in her life, like, her and, her and Arthur Miller had ended things. I don't think that Marilyn was trying to kill herself, but she was definitely depressed, and, like, that's in her, like, family like her mom was right. like she has a mental illness yeah. her family. Mm-hmm. Who committed her? Her therapist took her to okay. this like what she told Marilyn was like a t- retreat slash Ooh. like um kind of like retreat spa right. like um kind of like the thing for like Hollywood people where like they were would like get like psychiatric help and it would like nobody would know who they were, that kind of thing. But it was like I want to say it was, like, up north somewhere. Not in California. I want to say it was, like, on the East Coast, but I can't remember. Um, And she committed her, and Marilyn couldn't get out. And she was there for, like, a couple days, and, like, she couldn't make a call or anything. And so, like, I um, recorded this because it's so fucking crazy. So, like, she, like, was put in this padded room, and, like, Marilyn was just, like... I'm just, like, fucking depressed because I'm, like, getting a divorce from my husband who, like, based a fucking film on me that was, like, not good. Like, it didn't make me feel good. And then he, like, fell in love with, like, the photographer on set. Like, I'm, like, really, like, depressed. And, like, Mm -hmm. I have, like, a history of depression, blah, blah, blah. So she was also having problems with her gallbladder. So, like, she had had gallbladder surgery, which, like, kept her out of the public eye for a while. And she received surgery for her endometriosis during that time. But a little, like, once she had um, recovered from that stuff is when her fucking psychiatrist this woman committed her to this fucking place and um she wasn't allowed to leave and she wrote a letter to her current therapist dr greenson which like a lot of a lot of she, he was with her for a, a big part of like this part of her life and a lot of people have like a lot of questions about him because he seemed like kind of a shitty guy why um, do you have questions We'll get to that. So this is her letter to Dr. Greenson. I sat on the bed trying to figure if I was given this situation in an acting improvisation what I would do. So I figured it's a squeaky wheel that gets the grease. I admit it was a loud squeak, but I got the idea from a movie I made once called Don't Bother to Knock, which if you've seen it, it, she plays like a psychotic babysitter and it's like a pretty good movie. I loved it. I picked up a lightweight chair and slammed it, and it was hard to do because I had never broken anything in my life against the glass intentionally. It took a lot of banging to get even a small piece of glass, so I went over with the glass concealed in my hand and sat quietly on the bed waiting for them to come in. They did, and I said to them, If you're going to treat me like a nut, I'll act like a nut. I admit the next thing is corny, but I really did it in the movie, except it was with a razor blade. I indicated if they didn't let me out, I would harm myself. The furthest thing from my mind at that moment, since you know Dr. Greenson, Greenson, I'm an actress and would never intentionally mark or mar myself. I'm just that vain. So because she did that, they let her talk, they let her make a call finally. And she called Joe DiMaggio, and he came and picked her up. And he was just like, what the fuck are you guys doing? And, like, keep in mind, this was, like, many years after their marriage. She has just divorced Arthur Miller, and he's still, like, her guy. Her friend who, you know, it's fantastic. So she went on to say that the staff sent her to a different floor of the of the clinic after that had happened before Joe picked her up and she was condescended constantly. 
And there was a specific doctor that told her that she was a very, very sick girl and had been a very, very sick girl for many years. What the fuck? He asked me how I could possibly work when I was depressed. He wondered if that interfered with my work. He said he was very firm and deaf. Yeah, definite in the way he said it. He actually stated it more than he questioned me. So I replied, didn't he think that perhaps Greta Garbo and Char... God bless you. Didn't he think that perhaps Greta Garbo and Charlie Chaplin, perhaps, and perhaps Ingrid Bergman, they had been depressed when they worked sometimes. But I said it's like saying a ball player like DiMaggio, if, could, if he could hit a ball when he's depressed. Pretty silly. So she was just like, yeah. people can still work when they're depressed. Why are you saying I can't work? Why are you saying I can't do this? Sorry, I'm looking at pictures of her. I know. She she's looked, with a barbell. I know. Look at her little tiny barbell. Oh, she's cute. So then after she got out of there, Joe got her out of there, she moved to L.A. She bought her house in Brentwood, her first house. And during that time, she dated Frank Sinatra, um, oh, yeah, which I is when that. her ties to the mob possibly began. He got her a little white dog that she named Moth. Short for Mafia, because she was funny. Um, <laughs> she I like was, her. Yeah, she was very funny. She was just like, oh, I'm going to name him Moff. And he was just like, don't do that. And she was just like, yeah, I will. Um, so during that time, she just kind of kept to herself. Um, she dated Frank Sinatra. She just kind of hung out. When she, um, and she was also, like, dealing with her, like, inner turmoil, her health things, um, some people, like, it's hard to know who to believe because, like, during that time, she had um, Dr. Greenson, who was her therapist at the time, had her hire this um, housekeeper named Eunice Mir- Murray, mm-hmm. who said that Marilyn only drank champagne and ate pills. Which I don't know if it's true, because Marilyn loved cooking, she loved food, she loved Italian food, um, she, I don't think she could have, like, lived that long if she was only drinking champagne, I don't know, it was just, like, a weird thing, and also it's just, like, weird that her, um, therapist made her hire this specific woman. Also, um, I know that there's a... I don't know. I feel like when you when I hear about Marilyn Monroe and Frank Sinatra, there's like drugs involved. And so I'm interested in learning like, is that true? Where did that come from? Is it like, was it because I because we talked a little bit about like the drugs that they mm-hmm. that the producers or whoever yeah. like put on oh, yeah. her or like what was actually like consensual or like what she was you actually she just trying to like, do. Trying yeah. so Marilyn. So during that time, a lot of actresses, especially, were um, prescribed a lot of barbiturates. And what's really crazy, Which are? barbiturates um, can alter your brain chemistry. Ugh. Um, they can make you feel more awake or asleep, and like they've discovered since then that like you shouldn't just give those to people because sometimes they can like cause seizures or like weird things in people or like alter their brain chemistry and like um it's not good to just like give those willy-nilly to people and so Marilyn had a lot of doctors from the studio and just in general who were like giving her like free reign on whatever drugs she wanted and I read in a book somewhere, and I was trying to find this before the podcast, that she had, because she was super intelligent, um, she had read um, a bar, like, she had, like, a pharmaceutical manual, and so, like, she knew what the drugs were that were being given to her, and she, like, always knew what she could take and what she couldn't take and, like, how much to take and, like... I don't know. She was it, smart. She, she was really smart, and and like, which made sense for her because she was yeah. a Gemini with an Aquarius moon. Like, like she wants to know, and she wants to like be really specific about it because like yeah. she wants to know what works for her. Yeah. Um, and so I couldn't find anything about the pharmaceutical manual, but I know that I read it um, in a book at some point that she had 
like, had read about, like, pharmaceutical stuff and Mm. was really into it and knew the dosages that she needed to take and what she needed to take to make her feel certain ways because so many people were pushing drugs on her all the time. And so she knew whether or not to take those. Mm. Um, So my story starts again in 1962. So in 1962, she's been out of the limelight for a little while. Maybe... Maybe it's been like a year. I can't remember how long. Maybe a year. Maybe a little bit more. But when she returns to the world again, she's fucking luminous. She's lost some weight. She's like not as curvy as she used to be. She's like close to 40. She's not wearing her hair in the way close that she to used four, to. Like age 40? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. She's I didn't like, know she lived that long. Oh, yeah. yeah. Lots she of died. rumors that she died when she was 27 because so did Kurt Cobain and so did. Uh, right. Janice Joplin. I know, and mm-hmm. that's why and it's so she didn't. She was fresh. Yeah, she was most no, Yeah, because I'm like, well, no, that's not true. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. Um, she was wearing her hair like um, still blonde, like even more platinum than she'd ever worn it because it was more of like a golden blonde before, and she bleached it like platinum. And was, like, combing it out into, like, that, like, mm-hmm. 60s, like, flip do like look. Betty Draper. Right. And then, like, with, like, the white eye makeup with, like, the thick black liner. And um, she was wearing more, like, bold prints. And her body was, like, a lot thinner than, than it had been before because she had been through so much, like, health stuff, removing her gallbladder and getting surgery for her endometriosis. And then, of course, like, being committed and then, like, uh, Jesus. all of that shit. So she looked fucking luminous. Um, she, her style had changed. And she had signed on to doing this film called um, Something's Got to Give, which is my favorite film that she's done because she's her own voice Mm -hmm. and because she's a mother in the film. And she's never been a mother in any of her films. No, she's always like the the, blonde side. Yeah, exactly. And like, she's always wanted to be a mom or like taken seriously as an actress and like, in, in that day of Hollywood, which is very similar to today, it's just, like, you're either a babe or you're an oldie. Like, mm-hmm. there's no in-between. Right. And so um, the week before production began, she caught sinusitis, and Fox refused to postpone production, even though she had doctor's orders to postpone it. And um, she was too ill to work most of the next six weeks, even though she had like multiple doctors notes saying like she shouldn't be working um and like it sucks because like with sinusitis it's just like you want to be your best self and like you're foggy and you like you can't like sound like the way that you want to which Mm -hmm. is probably why she used her own voice because she couldn't really hear herself maybe who knows um and so uh she Fox went to the press during that time said that she was faking it and she just didn't want to work on the film which sucks because she had like multiple doctors saying that she couldn't do it Did and she, she shouldn't never, do ever it get to drop them Fox um it was like in and out so during her time of like being like I can't do this uh she took a couple days off to go to um, New York to sing Happy Birthday to the President Mm -hmm. and um, also throw the first pitch at a Dodgers game or I thought it was in a Yankees game or something like that. Anyway, she um, actually inflamed her... um, There's more honey, too. Um, She actually inflamed herself a little bit more, Mm -hmm. um, which sucked. And it gave her fantastic publicity, which is fantastic for Fox and the film. But they were just like, you, like, I'm going to, like, sue you because, like, you said that you were sick and you're, like, not sick enough to, like, travel and, like, do these things. And one, I don't know if you guys know this. I just assume everybody does because I know it. But, um... 
when she sang happy birthday to the president, that dress that she wore, she had to be sewn into. Holy it was shit. so skin tight that, wow. um, of course, she always ordered things like a couple sizes small and they had to like literally sew her into it. And it was basically like a sheer dress with jewels on it. And, oh, like, I just thought it was silver sequins always. No, it was like a sheer dress with like jewels on top. Like of Britney Spears basically. toxic stuff. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yes. yes, it's. If you look at the dress that they auctioned oh, look, it's off, a go- it's a Google search. Marilyn Monroe happy birthday dress. Yeah, if you look at the dress Tell when the they dress. like, <laughs> yeah, when they like auctioned it off, um, you can see a bit more about like how sheer it was. So like, there it is. There, like you can see like her body is that outline. Body? Kennedy? No. Oh. That's someone else. Whoa. Oh, there it is. Yeah. That's how sheer it was. Okay, I don't know who that is. Her. Oh. Yeah. She was wearing nothing underneath, which is, like, so crazy at that time. Yeah. That's, like... And if you see, like, her face, like, it's, like, more angular because she's, like, lost yeah, a ton of weight. She's yeah. really skinny. She really... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Even, like, her butt is just, like... She's and this a is black and white, more. which mm-hmm. I feel like if it was in color, you would be able to see yeah. a little bit more contour to like. I don't think that's the dress. But. No, it's not. But if you look at like um, some of the, if you look at like if you go down, uh, yeah, those guys touching the dress. If you go up a little this bit, one? no, up, yeah. Those guys touching it, you can see how sheer it is. Yeah, wow. look at that. You can see the seams in it. That's how sheer it was. Yeah. Like, you can see everything. I mean, the dress is, like, the same color as her, but I'm mm-hmm. sure, like like I said, if it was in color, we would mm-hmm. be able to see mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. a lot more. I Definitely. Think. So, um, when she got back to Fox, when she got back to L.A., the next scene that she filmed was this pool scene in Something's Gotta Give, and the studio invited the press to photograph the scene, and it was published in Life magazine. And she filmed, so she had, like, a little, like, fakey bikini that she could wear that looked, that, like, made her look nude. But, of course, being Marilyn, she took it off and was completely nude. And she was the first star at the height of her career to ever be photographed nude. And especially in Life magazine. Wow. So, like, they didn't show, like, nipples or butt or vag or anything. But she was nude, and she was in the pool, and she was, like, having fun. And, like, the pictures, you can look them up. Like, they're beautiful. Like, you can look up, like, Meryl Monroe, pool, something's got to give. And she's, like, got her little, like, foot out. And, like, she's, like, it's, it's like, a beautiful scene. Yeah. And, like, it's a fantastic movie um, because, like, that's a scene in the movie where she's, like, having fun in the pool and, like, attracting attention. Oh, that's so adorable. Yeah, that scene with, like, her little leg on the edge, that's, like, a big thing. And then she, um, (sighs) so, like, she looks very 60s there. Mm -hmm. So, like, she's, like, she was out of the public eye for a while, and then she just emerges as this, like, 1960s goddess. And then she's got this, like, svelte like form that she didn't have before and then she has this like big terry cloth robe that she puts on naked in front of all of these photographers and they just have a fucking field day with it and so like fox is just like oh fuck like she's no i was like that doesn't look anything like her so she falls ill again and fox decides to fire her because they're filming Cleopatra at the time. Oh. And Cleopatra is Elizabeth uh, Taylor. Taylor's film, which is, like, sucking up all with of the Marlon money. With Marlon Brando, from, right? Or uh, no, with uh, Richard Burton. That's right. Um, it's sucking up all of the money from Fox. And um, they're just like, we can't have two stars like this. And, like, Marilyn is just like... This is, like, a mom-and-pop movie. Like, this is, like, not anything. It's just, like, I'm having, like, health problems. But, like, anytime Marilyn has health problems, it means that, like, the picture is delayed, and then they, like, blame her for it. Um, So they try to replace her, but Dean Martin is just like, I'm not working with anyone else on this movie except for Marilyn. And so they try to replace her, but Dean is just like, I'm not going anywhere. Like, I'm not 
replacing her. And so they regret their decision and they reach out to her to resume filming. Um, And then they decide that they're going to resume filming um, like the Monday after she dies. They're going to resume filming. And they also have her cataloged for like this dark comedy. Um, And they have her flagged to star in a biopic about her ultimate dream hero, Jean Harlow. Oh, Like, wow. they, they decide to create a movie about Jean Harlow and have Marilyn Monroe star in it. So, a couple things. So, Marilyn Monroe had met the Kennedys through Peter Lawford, um, who she... Peter Lawford was an actor in Hollywood who's... A, I fucking hate him. Um, <laughs> he just, like, was in a bunch of shit. He, like, if you watch, like, who's that line or whatever, like, from, yeah. like, the 50s, he's always in it. And, like, he's just a little shit. He's from England. He's such an asshole. He, I hate him. Um, so sorry. <laughs> he married Pat Kennedy, who's John and Bobby's sister. And he, like, had a key to the castle. He met Marilyn through, like, the multiple... Castle. Yeah. He, like, met Marilyn through, like, multiple people and, like, jobs or whatever in, like, the 50s. And so she, like, knew him. She didn't... I feel like she didn't really like him. She just liked Pat, his wife, Pat Kennedy. And so she became friends with Pat, and Pat was really nice. And um, through Pat, she met... John F. Kennedy and she had like a little tryst with him just like a small little one that like wasn't enough to like be anything um however um it was like one or two times with like John and um sorry your cat was staring at the corner just creepy um he sent his little brother Bobby to cut things off with Marilyn Turns out Marilyn's really beautiful and really sweet, and <laughs> Bobby was cutting things off and was just like starting oh, a new. Fuck. Yeah, stayed with Marilyn and just decided to like have a little like fling with her. Turns out the fling turned into like much more, and Marilyn, while she was dating Bobby and John F. Kennedy, yeah. was there's a nice. lot of. Yeah. Um, between the two of them, especially John, she was on like Air Force One and she was always writing down in a notebook um, things that she wanted to talk about them later or talk about with them later um, because she didn't want to, she never wanted to feel stupid. So she would like write down what they were talking about so she could like ask them about it later and just be like, oh, what did you mean by this? And blah, blah, blah. And she would always, like, keep that with her. But because everybody assumed that she was so stupid, nobody took that notebook from her or were like, oh, what are you doing with this notebook? Right. Like, like they always assumed she was so stupid. Right, because she's this, like, really, like, sought-after, like, pers- like, persona, personality. Like, mm-hmm. you think, like, people are taking everything from her except this, like... I would think, like, you would want to... If you were going to exploit anyone, it would be, like, their notebook. Yeah. And they didn't even, like, go after it? Or, yeah. No. I mean, that's good. It's good (laughs) because a lot of people just, like, thought that she was, like, a dummy. Like, they were just like, oh, she's dumb. She's She's just, like... writing about how blonde her hair is today. Oh, yeah. Her little, like, musings. Oh, her poetry. Oh, so cute. Oh, she was married to a fucking playwright. Who knows? Like, who the fuck knows what they thought? Yeah. But... Nobody ever looked in her notebook. And she would write all of these things down. And um, she was in Air Force One or, like, at parties with, like, all of these, like, highfalutin, like, government people and, like, just, like, mob people. Because what sucked is that the Kennedys were really good friends with Frank Sinatra. And Frank Sinatra was pretty deep into the mob. So there's a lot of... Wasn't the dad Kennedy in the mob or something. I don't know. No, he bought the election or some shit. Yeah, some fucking shit. I don't know about the dad Kennedy very much. I just know that she had a fling with Kennedy, the president, 
and enough that Jackie didn't really care. And then Bobby, though, she was in love with. She really, like, fell for Bobby really hard. And they, like, had, like, a sustained thing. And so um, I don't know how it happened. And, like, a lot of people don't really have a lot of details. But it's come out that there's... um, The FBI questioned Bobby about Marilyn. And he has admitted to... Or he did admit to having a relationship with her. And there's, like, all these things that have come out in in the light since they've been dead for a long time and since Jackie's been dead for a long time because there was a lot of, like, a lot of, like, Marilyn Monroe fans were just like, oh, when Jackie dies, there's all these things that are going to come out. And wow. um, there have been things that have come out, like the, the FBI yeah. um, things about the Kennedys talking about Marilyn and that they were, the FBI was watching Marilyn for a long time because of her... Um, her relationship with Arthur Miller. Wait, why? Because he was a communist. Oh, right, that's, right, right. that's right. right. He was. Yeah. And so they they watched her for a long time, quote unquote, because of Arthur Miller. But then it's also just like, well, maybe because of the Kennedy as well. So and like, well, yeah, because she you go also from a communist mm-hmm, to someone very. She had big, applied for like a Russian on. passport at some mm-hmm. point, and so like they thought she was like a Russian spy or whatever. Um, and so. There's, like, there's all these, like, interesting things about her death. So, the week before she died, um, so she had been dating um, Frank Sinatra for a short amount of time. The week before she died, she went to this new resort that he had made called Cal Neva, or Cal Neva, whatever. It's on the, the... um, the line of California and Nevada. Um, it's a fucking... <laughs> Kill me that. Yeah. It's a fucking, like, <laughs> casino bullshit. Or whatever. Really original, yeah, Frank. Basically. Um, it was... Uh, Frank Sinatra owned it and the Rat Pack and Bobby Kennedy frequented there. And the week before she died, she went there and, like, people saw her there and... Um, multiple people said that she was raped by two of his mobsters. Oh, no. Um, which is super fucked up. And a couple people think that she died there and that they just transported her body to her home. And that she had, like, oh, like some people think that she had overdosed on pills or something mm. there and they had transported that her back sense, to her house. That doesn't make sense, It doesn't really make sense to me either. But it does make sense to me because there's, like, this book that I read about. um, At one point, she, like, had this relationship with with, uh, Frank Sinatra. And Frank Sinatra, like, I'm not a big fan of him because of the way that he treated Marilyn and, like, the way that he was because he was, like, so into the mob and, like, at one point, he, um, oh, what was it? He was, like, he was supposed to have um, John F. Kennedy come to his house. Oh, yeah, it was Peter Lawford. So Peter Lawford, who is such an asshole, who um, he yeah. uh, he was supposed to, Frank Sinatra was supposed to have John F. Kennedy come to his house while he was president. Frank Sinatra, like, built, like, a helicopter pad and all this shit, and then um, John F. Kennedy's Secret Service was just like, we can't go there. And Frank Sinatra was just like, what the fuck? Like, Peter Lawford, like, make this happen. Like, Peter Lawford was, like, their little friend that would just, like, make things happen. Right. Yeah. And, mm-hmm, and Peter Lawford couldn't make it happen. And uh, Frank Sinatra was really pissed because... Um, John F. Kennedy ended up staying up like somebody like somebody else's house or somewhere else, and he fucking like pushed uh, Peter Lawford out of the Rat Pack, and because of that, and like um, he kicked him out of the movie he was supposed to be in, and oh like God. wouldn't let him go to any of the clubs. Like <laughs> Oh and then he God. fucking like drugged Marilyn and like took her to his like fucking club and then well, she and got raped. Like Dean Martin part of the Rat Pack too. So yeah. when he refused to do that movie without her, was that 
influence that was by just, the backpack, or was that no, just Dean Martin? That was just Dean Martin. He was kind of like the good um, guy of the yeah. dissenting from that. Then, yeah, right? I mean, that was before that it happened. But Dean mm-hmm. Martin showed himself to like over time, like to be like a really cool guy. My actually, what's really fun is that in the time when I was like a teen and like really into Marilyn Monroe, my best friend was like super into Dean Martin. Mm -hmm. And so we would like talk about how Dean Martin and Marilyn Monroe were friends and how Dean Martin would stick up for Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. Wow, that's that's cool. cool. Really cool. He was a really cool guy. And actually I really like Dean Martin. I don't want this to (laughs) be um he had a persona similar to Marilyn Monroe's. He wasn't a big drinker and he would pretend to be a big drinker. Oh wow. Um, His persona was always just like, (laughs) I got a drink in my hand. And like he never he was never drinking when he was doing that. He wasn't a big drinker. And Marilyn wasn't either? Oh yeah, Marilyn drank all the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But like her persona, like her persona is like a dumb blonde. Was just like her. Um, oh right, right, right. Got it. So um, let's see. She met the Kennedys through Peter Lawford. Blah blah blah. Um, so she there went was to mob time. Cal Ren or whatever the fuck know, that was. Cal Navad. <laughs> God. <laughs> God, super original. Story. So there's all these. Okay, so this is one we're gonna go into like our like different um, our different theories. conspiracy theories. This is the best part. Yeah, I mean it's all good. Like I, yeah. I'm amazed. I had no idea. I yeah, this is all. a lot more than you probably ever asked for. <laughs> um, so horrible. there's um, the fake suicide line. Um, so I don't believe that she committed suicide because of a, a, a few things. So um, even though, right? First, sorry. Yeah. First of all, can we figure out what was told to the public at the time? What was told to the public at the time is that she had committed suicide right. and she had swallowed well, that's fifty pills. That's, that's what, what I thought. thought. Like, like commit suicide via swallowed Mad fifty Man. pills. <laughs> yeah. okay. like there's like a full page spread and it just says Marilyn Monroe. Committed suicide, swallowed 50 pills, kills yourself, like, blah, blah, blah. And, like, the, um, like, there's just, like, so many things that are just so wrong with it. It's just, like, it's it's fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, the fact that, like, this person supposedly killed herself and, like, so many things went wrong with, like, the investigation. (laughs) Like, um, so, the story is she, um had her friend um god i can't remember her name it was a female photographer um assistant staying with her the night before and uh she woke up the next morning and her and meredith were like hanging out meredith uh marilyn (laughs) her and marilyn were hanging out marilyn was just like oh i have all these things to do blah 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 and um so marilyn i don't think she went anywhere but she just had like phone calls to make and things to do Mm -hmm. and um she had her doctor dr greenson come over and he came over for a while and told her house uh keeper eunice mary right eunice murray sorry that she should stay the night because he was worried about Merid- Marilyn's condition. Meredith, Marilyn's condition. It's all right. It happens a lot, actually, which I never understand why, but it's fine. I don't know why either. Um, <laughs> which is weird, because the people that talked to Marilyn that morning didn't seem like Marilyn was in, like, a strange state or anything. Um, but the psychiatrist, Greenson, thought that she was. And he asked Eunice to stay on through the night, even though he just had, like, a session with her through the afternoon. So, um, she... I don't think she, like, went out for dinner. I don't think she really, like, left or anything. But she went into her room with the phone, and she made a bunch of calls. So she, like, called her friend and, like, talked to her friend because she was, like working on um, her production company and she was like super stoked on like all these projects that she was doing they were like talking about her production company the Jean Harlow biopic which she was Mm -hmm. super fucking stoked about she was super excited that Fox had like hired her back again that she was going back to work on Monday because she was super stoked about her film with Dean Martin Um, 
and yeah. like really feeling really good that like Dean Martin stood up for her. Right. Um, she talked to um, she talked to uh, Joe DiMaggio's son, who she's very close with. Um, and he let her know that he had broken up with a girl that she didn't like, and so she was super stoked. Oh, about that's that. cute. <laughs> um, they were talking about getting lunch the next day, yeah. and so like they were talking about that. Um, she talked to, I feel like she talked to another person where like they had plans for like the very near future to like get together. No one, I mean, this is the hard part about like mental illness and like suicide, and it's just like, yeah. is it like how can you like could you tell like you don't want to like put that onus on the people that talk to them, but that like day, yeah. all of those people that talk to her besides Peter Lawford, um, were just like she seemed fine. She was excited about the future. She like. Contrary to what Greenson said, like, she seemed, like, fine. Like, positive, we had plans, blah, blah, blah. And um, so she um, supposedly made a call to Peter Lawford and told him to say goodbye to the president and to say goodbye to you, too, because you're a nice guy. Bullshit. Yeah. Such bullshit. Like, oh. who the fuck says that? Gross. Ew. Someone no. who's making that shit up to make yeah. themselves look better? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so some people think that the psychiatrist, Greenson, did it. Some people think that he did it um, because she, in the days prior, had talked about... Um, letting the public know that she had a relationship with Bobby Kennedy and giving proof a la her notebooks Mm -hmm. from Air Force One. Um, Some people thought that... Why would uh, that... Sorry, why would that threaten Greenson as being um, a murderer? Greenson could be convinced to be um, on the side of the government. Right. Is what some people think. And some people think that he was in love with her. Some people Mm. think that they might have had an affair um, because he seemed really possessive of her and he, like, was prescribing her a lot of drugs. Um, There's some, like, really (laughs) questionable things. Yeah. Um, Some people think that maybe it was a mob hit um, because, like, I mean, it's like the stupidest thing it's just like some people think like Fidel Castro did it to be like fuck you guys oh Jesus All right. <laughs> some people think that it was like actually the Chicago mobster who was trying to get back at Frank Sinatra some people think that it was like Frank Sinatra's boys because of what happened at Cal Navo Navo <laughs> this place between California and Nevada <laughs> Um, some people think that, but so there are witnesses that say that Bobby Kennedy was at her house the day that she died. Okay. Um, she spoke to people the day that the day that she died and the day before she died, saying that she was threatening Bobby that she was going to release information about him and his family and what she knew because he wouldn't. He wouldn't take her seriously and leave his wife for her like he said he would, which is a big deal. Um, (laughs) Like a super huge deal. Um, There's a lot of people that think that the Kennedys killed her. There are. And Mm. even like on, I don't know that the History Channel is really reputable anymore. They kind of lost that for me when they did Vikings and it's not even remotely close to history. (laughs) And they have that alien show and exact. Etc. But they, I mean, there's lots of sort of reputable sources that seem to always point to the Kennedys. Yeah. But the pointing, it's an easy. It's also an easy target. It is. But the pointing to the Kennedys is never because she was with Bobby Kennedy and he was married mm-hmm. and she had these notebooks. They never give any credit to Marilyn except to say it's because she was sleeping with the president. And she that, like, was, was a like one superstar, and Jackie was said? pissed, yeah. and 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 that's why when you were telling me this a few weeks ago, I it made so much more sense that she was on Air Force One and she had the notebook yeah. and she was writing things because it was like 
I remember watching things about her going, why would they just kill her? Because <laughs> she's pretty. Yeah. Like, that's how they make it. Oh, the... The media still today always makes it seem like wow. if the Kennedys killed her, it was because she was sleeping with the president, and she might... I mean, she did maybe once, like, a while ago. But, but also, like, wasn't she the was president, like, with sleeping with, like, tons Everyone? of people? One of Marilyn's... So Marilyn's last call was to the White House. And it was a certain amount of time. Uh-huh. And some people think she might have talked to Jackie. Oh, wow. And... They don't know for sure. Nobody knows. And nobody knows exactly what happened to her, but we do know that her stomach was empty. So, right. Marilyn had so developed she had a tolerance. A bunch of pills yeah. That no. Were yeah. In there. Yes. So, Marilyn had developed such a huge tolerance for barbiturates and pills in general that she would have had to take 50 pills in a very short amount of time in order to kill herself because she was on so much medication. Mm -hmm. She developed such a huge tolerance. And actually, I watched a show that it was like a crazy amount of pills that she would have had to swallow. Yeah. Like, insane. That's like Kurt Cobain. He would have had to... I mean, there's just... Yeah. There's no way. And there was, like, nothing in her stomach. And when they did the autopsy, they just looked at her stomach and her intestines, and there was, like nothing there and they were just like oh yeah yeah barbiturate overdose and like one of the autopsy um doctors was just like there's something weird about this and went back the next week because he was just like i want to look at this again mm-hmm. and they had already cremated her body Whoa. it was already done so Whoa. a couple Holy weird shit. things eunice murray her housekeeper mm-hmm. when she supposedly in the middle of the night went to check in Maryland the light was on under the door and the door was locked so she looked around it from the garden view and could see that Marilyn was naked on the bed clutching the phone so her she went inside called her fucking doctor and her psychiatrist instead of calling the police they broke a window to get into Maryland guess what the window was repaired by the time the police got there. What so the weird. fuck? You know what else is weird? The fucking bedding that Marilyn was on was freshly laundered. They had moved Marilyn's body, cleaned the sheets, and put Marilyn back. What? I totally believe that. Yeah. I mean, I believe yeah. it, but that's insane. Like, like why? That, that weird fucking Hollywood cover-up shit, mm-hmm. like... Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Neighbors have said that there was an ambulance there when, like, for years they denied it, that there was an ambulance there. So they think that maybe Marilyn was actually alive and something happened that they didn't want to keep her alive. Some people think what happened is that she was... um, that the doctor gave her or someone get, like chloroformed her and then gave her an enema with a bunch of drugs that killed her because they were trying to silence her. Oh my god. And like that's why they didn't find anything in her intestines or her stomach and they said that it was an OD. Because like she didn't have any of the normal like things for like having an OD. Like she didn't she didn't vomit. She yeah. didn't have, like, any of the normal things. Like, if you, like, look at her body afterwards, it's just, like, not what you would normally see. Right. It's, like, really crazy. So, like, it sucks because here's this, like, person who's, like, given herself to, like, the public so much. And, yeah. And, like, no one knows what's happened to this, like, person. It's still a mystery. Yeah, it's still a mystery. And, like... Things are still coming out. And then you just, like, get these assholes that are just, like, trying to, like, bank on her. Like, that fucking movie with, like, Michelle Williams, like, where that, like, photographer was like, oh, I had a week with Marilyn. I truly did. And I was like, oh, no, I fucking did. I never watched that because it seemed um, awful. I specifically did not because I was just like, first of all, Michelle Williams didn't have her accent right. Second of all, I don't fucking believe this It made me sad that Michelle Williams agreed to do that. Movie. It made me really sad about that, too. 
So let me just make sure that I've said all of my things. <laughs> oh, the time of death is wrong. There was a ton of things stolen from her bedrooms. Her, or her bedroom, like a ton mm. of her journals, a bunch of her gifts from Frank Sinatra were stolen. Um, a ton of jewelry was stolen. Um, oh, I already said that Bobby visited her the day that she died. Um, oh, this is something new that I didn't know. So the day that she died, she received a stuffed animal in the mail that spooked her. And she seemed super suspicious and very jumpy that somebody was going to kill her. What? what? What source is that? That was... I don't remember what source that was, but oh. I can find it. Yeah. But that was something that I hadn't heard of her before. But it makes sense because, because in the week before her death, she kept talking about, like, coming clean with, like, talking about... Um, Bobby and their relationship and all the stuff she knew and blah 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 and yeah it was really interesting wow that's um, intense yeah so in to wrap up her funeral was super small and private Joe DiMaggio did everything um he paid for everything um cause she really didn't have very much money still even then she had like nothing she like bought her house and she like barely had anything Jesus um he also paid to have flowers on her grave every week until she died um they had a symphony playing and per her request they played over the rainbow um Mm -hmm. and there's a really sweet story that um we I can't remember if we talked about it on here but um where Judy Garland talked about Marilyn following her through a party and just being like I just want to be near you oh, that's really it. sweet it was really sweet mm. um carl sandberg was supposed to do the eulogy but he was sick so her acting coach and the man who she actually bequeathed her estate lee strasberg did her eulogy and um a quote from it is it is difficult to accept the fact that her zest for life has been ended by this dreadful accident Despite the heights and brilliance she attained on the screen, she was planning for the future. She was looking forward to participating in the many exciting things which she planned, which makes it feel like he didn't believe that it was a suicide. Oh either. fuck no, because mm-hmm. it's not. Like yeah, I'm like, sure. I'm sure there's a lot of people that didn't believe yeah. it was a suicide. Yeah, how could you believe it? Like, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. It people close any sense. close enough, but mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That were like, well, like, you didn't just tell us it was a suicide. Like, we know it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. And DiMaggio wouldn't let Sinatra or anyone of his, like, goons or people or anybody like that into the funeral. Yeah. Um, it was, like, very close, like, her closest people and, like, yeah. like friends. And I love... He was just like, fuck you guys. I'm not so I love here. Joe for, like taking that Mm -hmm. initiative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I really respect him for that. Obviously, always truly loved her, even though he wanted her to stay home and cook or some shit. But I have questions for you before we wrap up. Do you think we'll ever find out what really happened to Marilyn Monroe? I don't know. I feel like if we haven't found out... She's cremated, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. If we haven't found out at this point... I don't know if we ever will, because, like, I don't, I feel like a lot of the answers have to do with men or people that have died, Mm -hmm. and I can't trust any of the people that would have the answers anymore. Some of the people who have given answers, um, it's been great to, like, hear their perspective, but I don't know if we'll ever truly know. Yeah. Which sucks. Because I feel like it it was not fair no. at all. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. What's so your favorite you Marilyn Monroe movie? Ma, so my very favorite is her half. So actually, you can watch her half finished 
film, something's got to give. And they actually remade it with with different actors like mm. a year or two later. Um, but it's fucking incredible to see her as a mother and her own voice. And it's a totally different film. I love that. And then my other film that I love is Let's Make Love, which actually the critics didn't really like. But I really liked it because... Um, I really like the songs. They're, like, really weird. (laughs) And she just, like... She plays kind of like a ditzy lady, but she's, like, a... An actress that's trying to make it, and, um... She's just, like, in this underground acting company, and she's just, like, very sweet. Yeah. I like that one, too. Awesome. Yeah. Is there anything about Marilyn, about her story, that you'd like to share? I think she, I feel like she has a fantastic voice, um, a singing voice that, like, I really love, and, like, you can, like, get her And you're a singer. Yeah. So this is very... I think it's, like, really interesting to hear her singing voice, because she actually, like, trained, and she was friends with singers, like Ella Fitzgerald, and um, she wanted to be a singer, too. So, just like Tilda... (laughs) <laughs> um, so oh, yeah. that's what it. that's like another like fascinating mm-hmm. thing about her I think thanks for having me on you guys no this has been a phenomenal evening it has been I just I like learned. talked about Marilyn Monroe for like five hours <laughs> What time I, is I it? mean, it's only been three. It's oh, el- my God. It's 11. It's been <laughs> two hours and 42 minutes. <laughs> but it's okay. And counting. But and you can cut it down. But no, I'm, I'm But it's thrilled. all so important like, that we... I don't think we can, we can cut it down. Also... No. Everybody listening should find us on Instagram, which we haven't said yet in this episode, because we're so focused on the amazing women we're talking about. Um, We're High Tea and Strumpets um, on Instagram, and then we are also on SoundCloud. Yes, we are High Tea Strumpets Strumpets. Podcast. (laughs) Don't um, go to the High Tea Strumpets, but also, not podcast. <laughs> if not you go them. to our Instagram, there will be a link to our SoundCloud. Yes. And on that Facebook. is where you can listen to all of our episodes. Yes, yeah. and we're on Facebook, too, as High Tea and Strumpets Podcast. And then we also have an email, which is Strumpets at gmail.com. So email us with your suggestions, questions, anything like that. Yeah. And we have a Patreon that Which, is half set up. <laughs> it is no, it is set up, and this is what we're gonna do. We are going to talk about women in film. Oh yeah, and that is gonna be as a, as a patron of our podcast and our time and our efforts and our work. We, you get to receive special exclusive. Recordings of us reviewing films, mm-hmm. um, series, TV shows of women in film. Yeah, um, think one important. of the few things we've already talked about has been um, Outlander, Perry. which oh, has Outlander. been a huge. That's right. Oh my god! I'm not caught because up. we are all so like excited really about that show. So so opinionated. It is based in history it is interesting and we we have a lot of opinions about yeah. it and so patreon, if you'd like to hear those opinions <laughs> yeah and patreon is great because um instead of doing really annoying ads on our podcast we, exactly you can donate to our podcast and which podcasting while it's a free service for most people to listen to it's not free for the people to put on exactly we and, we spend a lot of time researching on these women yeah we spend a lot of time recording but also we would like to be on iTunes someday, which is actually not free. <laughs> we not? No. What the fuck? Like, people think, it's so people think podcasting is like super free, and then no. you know, I, it's time and uh, work and energy. It's, it's interesting. But you can so. donate to our podcast on Patreon, and there'll be extra episodes of different things we have opinions on, and different women in film that we want to talk about. Um, that we maybe don't have time to talk about while we're podcasting. But we're like actually that. really excited because we think our next film that we're going to cover is going to be something around Halloween. Oh, yes. Which is going to be The Witch. Yes. <gasps> which is one of it. my favorite movies. It's one is of the it best. too scary? No. It's spooky. Yeah, it's, it's not any 
more spooky it's than jumpy. anything we talk about on the regular. It's jumpy. Oh, too um, But also, The Witch slash The Crucible, because we're going to have Meredith watch it. Because yes. I feel like those I go really... Either. I think they use, those really go hand in hand. Yeah. I watched okay. um, The Crucible for the first time, like, last year. Mm-hmm. And with the one with Renona Ryder and Daniel Day-Lewis. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I feel like it's a... I think that would be an interesting topic with the witch and the Halloween theme. It's true. Anyway, donate to our Patreon. Follow us on all the social media. Email us. Do we Talk have, to us. Do we have a Twitter? Are we active? Oh, yeah, we do have a Twitter. <laughs> I'm not... A, you're I'm you're really, doing the Twitter. I know. So. I'm, really, I'm really good at looking at Twitter and bitching <laughs> about what people tweet, but I'm really bad at tweeting. But we have a Twitter, and it's yeah. high tea and strumpets. That's our... High tea and strumpets. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right, Tell well... Them. Until next time. Until next time. Bye. Cheers, bitch. Cheers, bitch. I used to laugh so loud, so gay. I would ask the boys, I'd say, I said, can I ride your bicycle now? And they'd say, sure. And then I'd go so many, but I started to laugh in the wind, you know, riding down the block, laughing, you know. But I loved the wind because it felt like it caressed me.